Welcome back to the Amagi speedrunning series, where today we're taking a look at every single Naruto movie. So all those great non-canonical, fun field flicks. Uh, I'm not speaking too fast yet, but we'll get right into it, and I will be trying to summarize every major plot point of all of these movies as quickly as possible. Before we get started though, we have a lovely message from today's sponsor. In case you've been wondering how you can make your own smooth and efficient videos, we have an easy solution for you, and we'll show you what you need to make your own speedrun video or any type of video that you want. Wondershare Filmora 10 lets you have all sorts of fun and provides you with many possibilities to intuitively design your videos thanks to a user-friendly interface. You can just drag and drop your files onto the editing track, choose from a preset template, and you're ready to go. Really, it's just that easy. With Filmora, you'll never have to worry about running out of possibilities. You know, just like Naruto, whose legendary running technique always gives him a leg up on his opponents. You too can become a master of video editing jutsu by using Filmora's latest feature, AR Stickers. This feature allows you to add stickers into your editing track that respond to your face's motion on screen. So if you want to stand out from the rest of the competition, this is a fun and easy way to do it. It goes perfectly hand in hand with Filmora's AI portrait add-on feature, which removes backgrounds from your video and comes with its own background effects. No need for green screens anymore. Since school season is around the corner, Filmora has launched their own back to school campaign to help you ace your first day back in school. You can get themed effect packs to make your videos even more vivid and you can save up to 42%. You can try Filmora for free. All you need to do is check the download link in the description. Keep in mind, free trials will have a watermark. But there's more! You can get your own free account by leaving us a comment down below, telling us what kind of video you want to create by using Filmora, and by sharing this video to your social media using the hashtag, hashtag create and Filmora, with an ampersand in the middle. You could be one of the three lucky winners that we'll offer a free Filmora account to. Alright, back to the video. This is a speedrun after all, so we'll be starting in 3, 2, 1. Naruto the movie, Ninja Clash and Land of Snow. This movie begins with a heroine previously unknown in the Naruto continuity, Princess Foon, Princess Gale in the US version. Foon's nemesis, Mao, challenged her group with an army of undead soldiers. His dark intentions seem to prevail, that is, until Princess Foon and her cohorts, Shishimaru, Brit, and Tsukiyaku, unleash the power of the Seven Colored Chakra upon him. They saved the day, and Naruto watching from afar couldn't have been more elated. As it turns out, Naruto was actually watching the scene in a movie, as was the rest of Team 7. However, the audience in the movie began to throw objects at the team for making too much noise while arguing with the cinema manager. As the team is forced to leave the theater without being able to see the ending, suddenly the actress who played Princess Foon, Yuki Fujikaze, passes by on horse, being chased by armored men on horses as well. As Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke manage to easily defeat the attackers, it turns out they were actually stuntmen disguised as bodyguards led by Yuki's manager, Sandayu Asama. As Kakashi comes in to inform them of the misunderstanding, he reveals that he had sent them to watch it as preparation for the next mission, to escort Yuki while the crew made the next movie in the Land of Snow. As it turns out, Yuki was actually the princess of the Land of Snow, Koyuki Kazahana. The land had been taken over by her uncle, Doto Kazahana, and his three-man team of rogue ninja when she was a child. Doto wanted Yuki's crystal necklace in order to unlock the Land of Snow's treasure, which Yuki's father, the daimyo, had hidden before being assassinated. As many citizens doubted she survived, apparently Kakashi was responsible for her rescue during the day of the revolt. Sandaya would eventually find her on a stage one day, and considered himself lucky to become a manager. After the discussion, the director would decide that filming would continue, intrigued by the idea of having a real princess play the princess in the movie. Eventually, Doto would arrive with his team and some ninja subordinates by train after melting the ice that covered the track's old railway system. As Sandaya, who leads a group of 50 samurai, attempt to charge after them, the mortar mounted compartments releases huge waves of kunai, massacring the entire brigade. Sandayu, clinging onto life, passes away after telling Yuki not to cry for him. Suddenly, Doto's blimp manages to capture Yuki and flies away, but not before Naruto manages to cling on with a kunai attached to a rope. As the two are taken to his mansion, Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura eventually regroup with them. After various battles between Team 7 and the Rogue Ninja, resulting in the death of all the latter and Nadare, Doto succeeded in obtaining Yuki's crystal necklace, only to discover that the treasure of the Land of Snow is a generator designed to melt the snow and thus bring spring to the snow country. After a confrontation with Sasuke and Naruto, Doto was then killed by Naruto with his Rasengan in a manner reminiscent of Princess Foon's defeat of Mao involving Rainbow Chakra. With the Rogue Ninja all gone, Yuki decided to resume her position as the Princess of the Land of Snow, which would eventually become the Land of Spring after the technology behind the generator was perfected. Despite being a princess, Yuki intended to continue her role as an actress. At the very end of the movie, Naruto, who had desperately wanted an autograph from the actress, was given an envelope from Sasuke afterwards, who received shocked looks from the other members of Team 7, including Naruto himself. Inside the envelope was a signed photograph from Yuki. The picture was of a bandaged up and apparently unconscious Naruto in the hospital, who was receiving a tender kiss in the cheek from the actress. At the end of the credits, the crew that had made the Princess Foon movie said cut and all cheered in unison. Naruto the movie Legend of the Stone of Galel. The movie revolves mostly around a special mineral called the Galel Stone, which was a strong and mysterious power. There was once a clan that could control the stone's powers, but they were destroyed because of the wars for the stone. A battle was taking place at night on a desolate seaside between the Sunogakure ninja and soldiers wearing bulky suits of armor. Despite their best efforts, the sand ninja are slowly overwhelmed by the sheer strength of the mysterious opponents. The timely arrival of reinforcements, led by Kankuro and Gara, turned the tide of the battle, with Kankuro slicing apart a suit of armor with his puppet, and Gara dispatching a large number of enemies with his signature sand waterfall imperial funeral. However, when Gara orders the sand ninja to shine a flare at the retreating enemies, a large warship is revealed, with its own arsenal of heavy weapons, much of the sand shinobi's shock 
shock and curiosity of its appearance. The ship then opens fires with its guns, and Gara's San Ara barely manages to protect its comrades as its artillery shells relentlessly pound to the beach. Naruto Uzumaki, Shikamaru Nara, and Sakura Haruno are on a mission to capture a lost pet ferret and deliver it to its village. Naruto comically refers to the creature as a cat for the remainder of the movie. While they're on the way to return the animal, they are attacked by a mysterious man clothed in night armor. He too is accompanied by the strange armored soldiers from before. The three fight him but get separated when Naruto, the knight, and the pet ferret all fall off a cliff. Shikamaru and Sakura realize afterwards what has happened and immediately go to look for them. Before they can, what appears to be an earthquake stops them in their tracks until they realize it isn't an earthquake at all, but the movement of a giant mechanical moving structure. Sakura and Shikamaru split up to search for Naruto. Naruto wakes up to find himself bandaged, as well as right next to an equally wounded man. They have been taken in by a very peaceful caravan of nomads that own a number of foreign animals, including ostriches and rhino. The old man goes on to inform Naruto that they are in fact the village that hired the leaf ninja to return the pet ferret, named Nerugui. The ferret also seems to have a great interest on the unknown man, much to the despair of the elder. While healing, the man seems to have a flashback to a dream that depicts what happened to him as a child. His home was invaded and destroyed while he hid, seemingly only when alive. He is almost found, but in the last moment he is spared and manages to live. Kahiko and his granddaughter Emina go into explaining to Naruto how their clan once originally had a country, but was destroyed a very long time ago by some kind of disaster, and that Nerugui is proof of it. They also tell him that Nerugui is in fact older than the clan elder, having been looked after by the clan for generations. As Naruto looks for an explanation from Temujin, the knight only asks Naruto about a strange power that is actually his chakra. Temujin appears to not know what chakra is, even if he can wield a similar power. Temujin simply tells him that he's there to build a utopia, and then goes on to invite Naruto to join him. Naruto promptly refuses, only for the ostrich he's riding to run away on its own. Still looking for an explanation from Temujin, Naruto follows him as he sneaks away from the caravan. After risking his injuries to save one of the caravan's children from falling out of a tree, Temujin claims that his debt has been repaid and continues to leave. Meanwhile, Shikamaru infiltrates the mechanical structure and finds what appears to be a lab with children in capsules. They are overlooked by a pair of women, Kamira and Ranke, with similar armor to what Temujin had been wearing, who operate a machine that makes the bulky soldiers from before. The two discuss the Galel Stone, something that Shikamaru has never heard of. He is almost caught, but manages to flee at the last moment. Naruto discovers that Temujin has gone missing and goes to head after him when Kahiko comes to visit him, saying how Nerugui has disappeared again. As his mission was to deliver the pet to the village the group is headed to, he's still to complete it. The clan elder even goes as far as saying as he should have hired Sand Ninja instead. Even when he returns the ferret to its owners, Naruto must go and find it again. Meanwhile, Sakura comes across an abandoned campfire and finds the caravan's trail. Naruto goes on to find Temujin again, who has Nerugui with him. He comically tells him to hand over the cat. Temujin finally reveals his name, and they find themselves in front of a very large vessel like before. They go inside, revealing the structure to be very advanced in technology, sort of like a European cathedral on the inside. There, Temujin introduces Naruto to his master, Haido. Dressed in what appears to be a bishop's robe, Haido goes on in detail about their goals, and again extends the invitation to join them. Naruto claims that he can't join them because he's going to be Hokage, but offers to spread the peace that they wish for. Nerugui appears on Temujin's shoulder, instantly showing a dislike for Haido. Haido starts thinking when they mention a caravan. They move out when an overhead announcement tells them that the fleet that was sent to the Land of Wind has been annihilated. Temujin and Naruto head on to find the ship that attacked the Sand Ninja, beached with all kinds of metal parts in the sand. Once they investigate the vessel, Naruto discovers Konkuro among a room filled with unconscious children amongst all the rubble. Konkuro immediately attacks Temujin, explaining how the ship had been wiping out the Land of Wind villages. Naruto demands an explanation, but all Temujin can say is that noble sacrifices for the greater good. Before they battle, they're interrupted by Kamida and Ranka, who Konkuro and Gara take on. Kamida uses a kind of mind control that seems to be like Genjutsu. Meanwhile, Ranka transforms herself, causing her to have gorilla-like traits as well as a large lightning attack. After a hefty battle, Gara manages to distinguish Ranka's lightning and kill her, but Kamida manages to flee by growing bat-like features, wings included. During the commotion, Naruto is separated from Temujin. The movie shifts to the caravan being attacked by one of Haido's followers known as Fugai. After destroying most of the wagons and killing most of the livestock, she questions Kahiko about where the Galel Stone is. Thankfully, who should step in but Shikamaru and Sakura, who claim to have seen her flare. They already managed to take out the soldiers. Fugai goes on to take on wolf-like traits and manages to escape. Shikamaru questions the elder about the Galel stones, but he doesn't want to talk. They start to leave, saying that they need to find a friend. When Kahiko asks if their friend was Naruto, they find that Naruto was with him. The elder goes on to ask the two for help. Through a series of flashbacks, we discover how Temujin met Haido after his village was destroyed. We also discover that Temujin actually has a Galel stone inside of him, causing his eyes to appear the red color that they are. After getting word that the caravan from before has information, Temujin returns to what is left of it, only to be captured by Shikamaru. Naruto has managed to find Shikamaru and Sakura, and the three stay with the caravan people who have managed to escape and are currently hiding in a cave. There, they question Temujin to find out what Haido wants with the Gelo Stone. Kahiko claims that the stones only cause harm, but Temujin reveals he has a stone inside of him. The elder goes on to question Temujin about a book and about their clan, confusing him. He tells him that only members of the royal family and their clan could buy the stones within their bodies. He then tells him that the royal family had crossed the ocean, taking the Book of Galel with them. Temujin hadn't come to the new land, in fact he'd returned home. Kahiko tells him that they don't know the stone's origin, but they do know it was a mineral that their clan was able to refine and use as they pleased. It was very powerful, so much so that an entire civilization was wiped out over the battle for it. Afterward, the few remaining clan members sealed it away in an attempt to keep it from happening again. The only reason they didn't destroy it was because the only ones who could were those of royal blood. Determined after the tale, Temujin tells him that he wants to achieve his own kind of utopia. He manages to escape, he was free the whole time, and kidnaps Kahiko to make him lead him to the Galel mines. They don't know where the mines are, but Nerugui manages to lead them to it. Temujin and the Elder find the ruins and journey deep into them to find the entrance to the mines. The Leaf Ninja try to save Kahiko, only for Haido and his entourage to appear. Shikamaru tries to stop Haido to question him, only for Haido to claim he only wants peace, and he's going to create a utopia. Shikamaru ironically states that they are doing the exact opposite. Naruto angrily asks him if he even cares about his fallen comrades, whom Haido only claims are noble sacrifices. 
After Naruto tells him that dreams about friends are nothing, the Elder finally triggers a mechanism that seals him and Temujin into a passageway into the mines. Hado reveals that he possesses the Book of Galel before smashing Naruto into a wall like it was nothing and follows them. Kamida and Fugai attack, but Shikamaru and Sakura hold them off to allow Naruto to follow Hado. Temujin and Kahiko find themselves in the Chamber of Sealing and find a picture that appears to be one of despair. The Elder tries to reason with Temujin, but Temujin doesn't want to hear it. Kahiko then reveals a knife. Meanwhile, Kamido toys with Shikamaru as she flies around, he's unable to get a lock on her shadow, but then he suddenly spots Konkuro on the far side of the ruins. As Fugai chases after Sakura, she's unable to lose her even after Sakura blinds her. Finding a crystal structure that creates echoes, Sakura uses herself as bait so Fugai will howl and triggers the crystals to collapse on top of her. Shikamaru fills the whole area with lines with explosives, most of them are fake, just pieces of paper, so Kamiro cannot fly about. Just as Kamiro thinks she already knows what he has in store, Konkuro suddenly launches one of his puppets to automatically trap and kill her. After wounding Temujin, the Elder has his blood on a dagger and tries to pierce the seal on the floor only for Hado to interrupt. Just as Haido finds the mine's key, Nerogui tries to stop him. The ferret is killed by a barrier around him and the Gelal stone falls out of the ferret's mouth. Temujin stands in front of the Elder as Haido is about to kill him, Temujin claiming there is no reason to kill him. Temujin suddenly has a bit of deja vu just as Naruto appears. Haido tells Temujin to kill the both of them but Temujin has had enough and refuses. Haido then claims that he's useless, no different from his parents. Deja vu happens again and Temujin finally realizes that Haido was the one who murdered his parents. Haido goes on to turn into his own kind of creature, which captures Temujin and extracts the Gelal Stone from him. The other begs Naruto to stop Haido. Naruto encourages Temujin to get up as he fights, even going so far as to use a Rasengan, but Haido has managed to tap into the mine and heals all of his twisted limbs. Naruto still wishes for Temujin to help him. Just as Haido goes to finish them, the fake soldiers go and protect them both. The souls of the children emerge, the soldiers are destroyed, and Temujin finally realizes his wrongdoings. Combining both Rasengan and the Gelal Stone, Temujin and Naruto manage to kill Haido, but in the process, they accidentally destroy the key to the mine. The walls start to crumble around them as the mind spirals out of control. Shikamaru, Sakura, and Konkuro all manage to retrieve the children from the machines, but only for the ruins to start collapsing. They cannot control it, but there is a way to destroy it. If Temujin puts his hand on the seal from before, he can summon a time-space continuum. Only royal blood can do it, and the one who does so will end up sacrificing himself. Naruto tries to stop Temujin from doing it, for Temujin to knock him out. He says doing it is the only way to atone for what he's done. Temujin goes into the collapsing gala to the seal and activates it. All is quiet as Shikamaru, Sakura, Konkuro, and Gara can only watch as everything in the void's ways begins to be devoured. Naruto remembers Sasuke as he's faced with Temujin's death. As Temujin waits for his faith, he suddenly finds himself floating as a line of Naruto clones have clutched onto him. Sakura almost goes into the void herself to see where Naruto is. Only at the last moment, a burst of the Gelel escapes, causing the land masses to start moving. When it finally stops, they find Kahiko, who claims that he feels even better than ever thanks to the Gelel. He is even joyously reunited with a still alive Nerugui. The wastelands have now turned into an oasis as all the children awaken. Temujin awakes, realizing that he is still alive with Naruto still clutching his arm. They find the picture of despair from before, and it wasn't one after all, in fact it was one of hope. Later they all gather at the ocean, where Temujin and the others are gathered to prepare themselves to leave, back to the land where they came from. They are aware that it's one with lots of conflict, but Temujin wishes to help where he can. Temujin's eyes have now turned back to their original bright green, and much to the others' disappointment again, Nerugui has chosen to go with him as well. As they leave, Naruto stands up on a cliff and shares a sign with Temujin, promising each other to never give up. Naruto the Movie, Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom Naruto Uzumaki, Kakashi Harake, Sakura Harano, and Rock Lee were assigned to a B-rank mission to protect the prince of the land of the moon, Michiru, during his world trip. Other escorts had been hired, but had quit due to being treated poorly. The Land of the Moon is a very wealthy nation, so Michiru tended to buy whatever he wanted, and had a very materialistic worldview. His son, Hikarusuki, also acted much in the same manner, which irritated Naruto. On the dock of the ship, Naruto was eating a few bowls of ramen while Hikaru was playing on his Game Boy. Sakura leaves to do something. As Hikaru approaches Naruto, he snaps the top six and a half in Hikaru's presence. Hikaru carelessly proposes that Naruto is being his vassal. Naruto gets bewildered and cautious by this. Hikaru explains to Naruto that he'll give anything he desires. Naruto refuses Hikaru's offer because of enslavement. Hikaru keeps insisting Naruto to accept, but Naruto gets annoyed and tells him to stop looking down on people and grow up. He gets disappointed in this and shoots a tor arrow at the back of his headband, causing Naruto to turn red and become terrifyingly enraged, nearly entering one-tailed mode in the process. Naruto, in a rage, snaps his suction cup arrow in half. Hikaru becomes frightened and attempts to flee, but Naruto with amazing speed grabs him and is fed up with his attitude. Naruto explains he doesn't care if he caused an injury. He says it'll be worth it and punches Hikaru's head, causing him to cry. Naruto informs Hikaru that he can't do things as freely as he thinks he can. Sakura then runs up to Naruto for hitting a kid. Naruto is punched into the water. During the trip, the caravan stopped at a circus. When Hikaru took a liking to a rare saber-toothed tiger, Chamu, which was featured there, Michiru ended up purchasing not only it, but the rest of the circus as well, placing it under the team's protection. Hikaru attempted to befriend the tiger, but found that it disliked humans. He lost interest in the circus, and thus being a sea voyage, when a storm hit, he appeared unconcerned about the animal's well-being, causing Naruto to become disgusted at his lack of value for them. Upset by Naruto's view of him, Hikaru went out to help Chamu get to safety. Naruto saved both of them after they were washed overboard. The next day, Naruto, Sakura, and Lee became friends with Hikaru. After returning to the Land of the Moon, the team found that the country had been taken over by Shabadaba, one of the nobles and a former friend of Michiru. Having hired three powerful ninja to assist him, Shabadaba had disposed of the king and planted the same with Michiru and Hikaru, the remaining heirs to the throne. 
He ordered the military forces to kill them all, but the team was able to escape with the help of some soldiers to Lords of the King. Escaping to a hidden cave, Michiru found that his father was still alive, but Sakura, although able to heal his petrified arm, was only able to keep him alive for a little while. The King revealed that he suspected that something like this would happen, and arranged for the journey to keep Michiru out of harm's ways. Before dying, the King told Michiru and Hikaru that people are truly important in life, not material goods. During an attempt to escape the country by boat, the three ninja hired by the Shabadaba attacked, disabling Naruto, Kakashi, Sakura, and Lee with reaction dulling poison that slowed their reactions. The prince was captured, but the emergence of Naruto's fox chakra allowed him to repel the attacking ninja before the prince's son could be taken. At the castle, Shabadaba's reasons for taking over the country were revealed to be purely material, the same things Michiru had considered important, as he intended to use the nation's wealth for himself rather than the people. Michiru was disgusted by Shabadaba's attitude and realized the truth of what his father had said. Shabadaba decided to put him to death by a drawn out hanging. He had Michiru balance on a board of wood not strong enough to support his weight while wearing a noose, ensuring that sooner or later he would fall and be hanged. With the help of the circus Michiru had purchased earlier, Kakashi's team made a rescue attempt with Hikaru and the rogue soldiers, infiltrating the palace by disguising themselves as members of the circus. One by one, Kakashi and his team fought individual battles. Kakashi fought the many soldiers in the courtyard, while each of the Genin fought one of the ninja. Lee wielded a pair of ninjaku that had the ability to connect to other stabs hidden in his leg weights, creating weapons such as a long staff and a chain whip. After being defeated briefly, Naruto unleashed his fox chakra once again and blew Ishidate away. He killed his opponent Kongo using reverse lotus. Sakura was able to dispatch her poison and genjutsu using opponent, Karabana, by shattering a chandelier to locate her by watching where she moved, and subsequently killed her in one punch. It turned out Karabana had worn too much perfume, which had helped Sakura locate her opponent while in a genjutsu by smelling the perfume. Naruto fought against Ishidate, the leader of the three ninja, while helping Hikaru reach his father. Hikaru shot an arrow, severing the rope around Michiru's neck, and Naruto's shadow clones caught the prince and his father. Ishidate was enraged and attempted to kill Naruto, but Shabadaba ordered him to deal with Michiru. Ishidate powers up his petrification glove to its fullest as Shabadaba continues to download target effect. Enraged by his constant victory, Ishidate accidentally petrifies Shabadaba. In the penultimate scene, Naruto, his leg disabled by his opponent's strange petrification technique, rode on Michiru's shoulders to attack with his Rasengan, which then reflected the light of the moon in such a manner that it grew and took on a crescent shape, creating the Crescent Moon Rasengan. He hit Ishidate with his attack, sending him flying and destroying Shabadaba's stone remains, killing them both. After Ishidate's death, Michiru took the throne of the country and promised to rule as his father had done while starting on a diet, beginning weight training, and once the country settles down, he was going to pick Hikaru's mama, Amayo. As Kakashi was immobilized due to the overuse of the Sharingan, his team decided to take a vacation in the Land of the Moon when he recovers. Two weeks later, Kakashi had regained his strength and the team departs as the saviors of the Crescent Moon Kingdom. King Michiru decides to once again try reconnecting with his wife, now knowing what he shouldn't do. Naruto ship it in the movie. The opening scene of the movie showed Naruto fighting a monster only to be killed by him. The setting then went back to a few days previous where a man named Yomi attacked a shrine to reveal the spirit of Morio, a demon who attempted to destroy the world and create the Thousand Year Kingdom. Since he was lacking a body, Yomi offered his as a temporary substitute and they could retrieve Morio's original one sealed away in a different shrine. The only threat to Morio's plan was a priestess known as Shion, who could seal his spirit away once more. He raised a stone army from their slumber to attack the rest of the world, but his four subordinates went to murder Shion. They were given special chakra creatures to enhance their strength. To deal with the threat, Konoha Kokure sent out many advanced teams to solve the stone army. Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Harno, and Neji Hyuga and Rock Lee were sent to guard Shion and deliver her to the shrine where Morio's body was sealed. They fended off her four would-be assassins who exhausted themselves in a failed attempt to kill Naruto. Shion told Naruto of his upcoming death. While initially skeptical, her assistant, Taruho, explained that Shion could see the future and all the events happening in her visions were 100% true. As they headed for the shrine, the group was ambushed once again by Yomi's four subordinates and split into two teams. Lee killed his opponent by eating an alcoholic candy to get him in a drunken fist while Naruto was kept busy by his. Neji told Sakura to escape with Shion, unaware that his two opponents were actually just one man and a puppet to distract him and let the remaining ninja catch up to Sakura and Shion. Sakura was then shot with an anesthetic jutsu by the remaining ninja and Shion was killed. This turned out to be a ruse, the dead Shion was actually Taruho, who transformed himself into a copy of Shion to trick them into thinking that he had killed the real one. Shion explained that her power worked by allowing her spirit to jump back in time in the moment of her death, thereby allowing her to avoid it by having someone die in her place. Naruto insisted that he would not die, and likewise would keep Shion safe. Thanks to Lee, Neji realized that the reigning three ninja must be replenishing their chakra to battle effectively. Naruto was sent on ahead with Shion, while Sakura and Lee tricked their opponents into wasting their chakra on futile attacks. When they ran out of chakra and had to replenish it, Neji disabled the final ninja, who was providing the chakra, leaving the other two powerless against the Insakura. At the mountain temple where Morio's body was kept, Naruto and Shion found a stone army waiting. On their first step to get past the army, both Naruto and Shion fell off a cliff. Afterwards, Naruto came up with a plan and promised Shion that he would protect her. Naruto then held the army back using shadow clones while Shion headed back inside the temple to begin the sealing ritual. Yomi was already inside. He had terracotta soldiers attack her before her light slash and killed them. Yomi tricked Shion into beginning the technique with him inside the barrier, allowing Morio's spirit to reunite with his body. Eventually, Kakashi, Tamari, and the others came into the fight and destroyed the remaining army. After Naruto came to rescue her, she broke into tears, saying that all the people who sacrificed their lives were a waste. Moria then burst free from Yomi's body into the air, and Naruto started fighting him. Yomi died, and his body fell into the lava. Swallowing down Moria's words about her mother's actions and Shion's powers not letting him fuse into her, and about to see the prediction of his death come true, she used her power to shield Naruto from being stabbed, changing Naruto's fate. Intending to kill herself and Morio in order to protect him, Naruto stopped her seconds before her death, reminding her that he promised to protect her. After he inspired her to live, they let their chakra and emotions go, and used Naruto and Shion's super chakra Rusengan to finally destroy Morio, creating a volcano where the shrine used to be in the process. With Morio gone, Naruto asked Shion what she intended to do now. 
She replied that because Moria was a demon caused by the evil thoughts of men, it was possible that there could be another Moria someday. Because of this, she would pass her power on to another priestess that would suppress demons like Moria. Indirectly asking Naruto to father her child, she asked if Naruto would help her, much to everyone's shock. Misunderstanding what she said, Naruto happily agreed. Naruto ship it in the movie. Bonds. A mysterious group of ninja from the Land of the Sky made a surprise attack on Konoha. This is because Konoha had nearly destroyed the Land of the Sky during the Second Shinobi World War. The group began attacking Konoha, causing mass mayhem, with Sora and Nin flying using a winged mechanical device and bombarding the village. A boy had come from a very long way to inform Konoha that his village had been attacked, and he was looking for his sensei, who was currently in Konoha, so he could go back with him to heal the injured at his village. A three-man team, consisting of Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata were sent to accompany the boy, Amaru and Shino, his sensei, to help Amaru's village. The team traveled through a forest full of eerie beasts and poisonous animals via small rowing boats down by a river. A Sora and Nin scout suddenly appeared in the sky. Sakura, Hinata, and Shino hid by the riverside with Naruto and Amaru hiding underwater until the Sora and Nin had passed. While underwater, Amaru dropped his scalp blade, a present from his beloved sensei, and swam down to get it. As he tried to resurface, he became caught in the reeds. After freeing Amaru from the reeds and helping him back to the boat, Naruto noticed that Amaru was, in fact, a she, due to her breast and corset. Naruto blushed before a poisonous piranha like fish bit him and he fainted. Later on, Naruto woke up still blushing, partly because Amaru was sucking the poisonous blood out of the wound on his thigh, thus saving Naruto. Naruto asks if she was a she, and suggested that Amaru had feelings for his sensei, which he was slapped for. Meanwhile, at Konoha, the Sora Nin retreated because they were out of chakra to continue flying, so Konoha sent another special team to search for their base. Sai approached the ships they were using as a base near a beach on one of his ink birds to attract their attention and gauge their abilities, while Shikamaru and Kakashi hid behind some rocks near the shore, waiting for the fourth man of the team, Shino, to infiltrate and damage their base. At Orochimaru's lair, Orochimaru had become even more ill because the body transfer technique he used was close to his desperation. Kabuto was attending to him and told Sasuke that the Sora Nin were attacking Konoha to which Sasuke replied that he didn't care. Orochimaru ordered Sasuke to capture and bring back to him a man who would be able to help him perfect his reincarnation technique. Naruto and company finally reached Amaru's village, and they found that the village had been badly attacked, with some parts now in ruins with the inhabitants nowhere to be seen. Amaru ran around trying to find some of the villagers before she unknowingly triggered a trap which sent a volley of kunai flying towards her. Her sensei rushed to block the kunai to protect her but was hit in the process. Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata came to the scene but it was too late and Shino died of his fatal injuries. After Amaru came to her senses, they continued to look for villagers, with Sasuke now on his way to the village. Later on, Naruto, Sakura, and Hinata decided to search for the villagers without Amaru. Eventually, Sakura met up with Naruto, who was looking at runes in the distance. They went together to explore them and found themselves on the front of an evil monster calling itself the Zero Tails, which identified itself as a version of a tailed beast that fed in the darkness of human souls and had somehow taken over Amaru. Sakura proved to be no match for the beast and fell unconscious. The creature sensed that Naruto had the dark power inside of him, so it taunted Naruto and coaxed him to use that power by saying that he cannot save anyone without it. This made Naruto remember his failure in saving Sasuke and became emotionally unstable, which caused him to enter his initial Jujutsu form, his three-tailed state, and finally his four-tailed state. After fighting the monster for a while, a seal on Naruto given by Jiraiya came off and reminded him of how the tail beast chakra hurt his friends, causing him to immediately turn back to normal. Naruto pleaded with Amaru to ignore the darkness in her heart, which finally resulted in the beast being defeated. Sakura woke up in Naruto's arms and she slapped him to fill the awkward moment. They decided to split up, with Naruto continuing to search for villagers, and Hinata and Sakura returning to Konoha to get help. Amaru, who was supposed to go with Sakura, stayed behind to help Naruto. They then found some old ruins that Shino had mentioned earlier and entered them. Shino was inside, unharmed, and spoke of conquering the world in the power of darkness. Amaru, excited that her sensei was still alive, ran to hug him. Naruto noticed something wasn't right, and Shino laughed mockingly at Amaru for trusting him. Shino explained that he'd been researching the power of darkness for about 15 years, and he'd finally found it in Konoha. He claimed that all he needed now was a secret scroll with the reincarnation technique written on it. He then transformed into a muscular, youthful form, and Naruto charged towards him, only to be unmatched again and again, with Naruto becoming more and more injured. Shino, in his body revival form, tried to convince Naruto to use the Ninetales Chakra, with Amaru distraught and in tears while Shino and Naruto battled. Ever since she was small, she had a strange illness and no one had liked her, fearing that they would be infected. Only Shino had dared to care for her and managed to cure her. Naruto told her not to throw her feelings away, while the evil Shino jeered at her. She finally admitted her love and feelings to her sensei, to which Shino merely laughed. Naruto attacked him and managed to land a hit, although he didn't seem to be affected. Sasuke appeared suddenly, striking Shino with Chidori Senbon, and attacked his cells and forced him to revert back to his normal self. He then explained that Orochimaru needed help with the reincarnation technique from Shino, who then gave Sasuke a scroll saying that it would be enough to help. Shino then fled the scene with Sasuke pursuing him. Naruto told Amaru to go find the villagers, while he went after Sasuke. He found Sasuke in a room and asked what he was doing there, which Sasuke ignored. In the same room was a cocoon absorbing dark chakra. Shino had fused with the cocoon and attacked Naruto and Sasuke. All their counterattacks proved useless, as any chakra they used was absorbed by the cocoon and rendered harmless. Using tentacles as his arms, Shino grabbed hold of both of them and began draining the chakra. Sasuke activated the first level of his cursed seal, releasing its evil chakra, and Naruto, who understood Sasuke's plan, turned into his initial Jinchuriki form and sent a large amount of chakra into the Zero Tails, and managed to break free using his shadow clones before using Tornado Rasengan. After escaping himself, Sasuke ascended to the second level of the cursed seal, before using Chidori Katana to cut off the beast's power. The creature began rampaging after regaining control of itself, having now completely absorbed Shino. Amaru found Hinata and the villagers in a cell and managed to free them all before finding them a flying lifeboat for them to escape in. Naruto rushed out of the ruins and ordered Amaru to go. She refused, but Sasuke threw her into the boat by force. Naruto also forced Sasuke under the lifeboat using a Rasengan, mouthing a few words to Sasuke as he fell before flying away using the wings from his cursed seal form. Remembering how Jiraiya once said that Naruto had the willpower to never give up, he created a large amount of shadow clones and began destroying the ruins using the Guts Rasengan. Suddenly, the whole ruin had been destroyed with a Rasengan, leaving Naruto to fall down into the sea. Amaru saw Naruto from the boat and, grabbing a pair of Sora Nin wings, flew up to catch him. Upon reaching him, she removed the wings to grab him, and they fell together.
Naruto Shippuden in the movie, The Will of Fire. The film concerns the potential outbreak of a fourth shinobi world war while the ninja with Kekei Genkai abilities begin to disappear from Kumagakure, Irogakure, Kirigakure, and Sunagakure. Team Kakashi is sent on a mission to follow the tracks of the missing Kekei Genkai wielding ninja, which leads him to Mount Shumisen, located between the land of Earth and Kusagakure. Sai, who is flying on his ink bird, is attacked by a bird which attacks with explosive tag like feathers. Naruto, disobeying Kakashi's orders to continue the mission, runs towards where Sai fell, saying he will not abandon him. There, Chimera like creatures attack them, which I quickly defeat, although Naruto is injured in the process. Back at Konoha, Kakashi gives a report on the mission to Tsunade, while worrying that the next ninja target will be him. Tsunade seems to not care as much, telling Kakashi to relax. At the hospital, Kakashi gives Naruto his bells, which they used for their first drill together, and tells him to fix them because he crushed them. Konoha and Anbu are sent to Mount Shumisen by Tsunade to search the area for the tracks of missing Kakai Genkai Ninja. There, a mysterious ninja along with his followers absorb their chakra with his mysterious technique using their earth nature affinity against them. That night, the same mysterious ninja, the mastermind and antagonist of the film, known as Hiroko, projects his image over the skies of the five great ninja villages, introducing himself as a shinobi of Konoha Kakure. He states that he has taken the Kakai Genkai of the four missing ninja using the Chimera technique, and that he plans to gain the fifth and final Kakai Genkai, which will make him immortal. By doing so, he declares the fourth shinobi world war. Konoha Kakure is believed to be behind the incident, as by the way Hiroko introduced himself, it seems that Konoha was working with or using Hiroko. Rumors circulate that they're preparing a rebellion. With the five other nations amassing troops at the land of fire's borders, threatening invasion, the fire daimyo orders United to apprehend those who are responsible and prove Konoha's innocence. In the event of failure, the Land of Fire will be forced to destroy the village in order to preserve world peace. Tsunade is awaiting Gara at a secret meeting place to discuss what shall be done. However, on the way there, Gara and Asunagakure Shinobi are attacked by a bird-like creature which traps them in an avalanche. Meanwhile, Hiroko states that the Chimera technique can only absorb maximum four Kekai Genkai, and that certain conditions, most importantly the light of an annular eclipse, which is two days away, is required for the absorption of the fifth and final Kekai Genkai, which will make him immortal. That night, Hiroko appears before Kakashi in a dream, activating a puppet curse he had placed on him ten years ago, planning to seal Kakashi's Sharingan. Kakashi asks Tsunade to allow him to go for the sake of the village. Before he leaves, Kakashi asks Tsunade to place a special seal on him, will automatically activate Kamui when Hiroko attempts to absorb him. That same night, Shigamara is visiting Asuma's grave while Kakashi is visiting Obito's. Kakashi asks Shigamara to tell Naruto that he's leaving the village and not to follow him. As Kakashi lets Hiroko take over his body, Naruto sees and chases him. Shikamaru stops him and tells him what Kakashi had told him to say. At the Hokage's office, Tsunade orders the Konoha 11 to stay away from Kakashi, labeling him as a missing nin for the sake of this year's mission. After this leaves, Tsunade tells Shikamaru the truth, trusting that he will do what he needs to do as the leader. Meanwhile, Sakura comes to rescue Naruto from the cell that Shikamaru put him in as they leave the village to rescue Kakashi. The Konoha 11 are sent to retrieve them. The next day, Sunagakure is lining up troops and weapons at the border of the Land of Fire, thinking that Konoha attacked Gara, their Kazakage. When Naruto and Sakura follow Kakashi, the Konoha 11 meet them and try to bring them back. Naruto reveals that Kakashi once told Team 7 during the bell test, It is true that in the ninja world, those who break the rules and regulations are regarded as scum, but those who abandon their comrades are even worse than scum, which changes the mind of some members. However, the scene is interrupted by Ichi, who is sent by Hiroko to stop and or delay them, using his Kamara snakes. Team Guy stays behind to allow the others to pass through the first gate. Me and her Kamara Nin Dog stop them the next gate, and teammate stays behind to delay her, with Naruto and Sakura and later Team Asuma pass. As Naruto, Sakura, and Team 10 reach the next gate, Sana appears riding the bird that fires exploding feathers. Team 10 is still following the original mission and tries to stop Naruto and Sakura. However, Sai appears on his ink bird, leaving a flash bomb to create a distraction, and takes Naruto and Sakura with him, leaving Team 10 behind to fight Sana. At this time, Rock Lee and Neji defeat Ichi using Front Lotus 8 Trigrams Palms Revolving Heaven while Ten Ten distracts him, and Teammate defeats Ni using Secret Technique Insect Sphere inside a trap that Shino built while Kiba and Hinata delayed her. Team Ten gains an advantage over San, with Shikamaru binding him and his Shadow and Ino using the Mind Body Switch Technique to take over his mind and tell him that they're after Naruto, not Kakashi. They also ask him where Kakashi's headed. However, San breaks out of the Mind Body Switch Technique. He then summons Ichi and Ni and uses the Chimera Technique on them and himself, and the three become a huge Chimera, which seems to be a combination of all their respective Chimera beasts, possessing all their abilities. Meanwhile, Gara is thinking of what Jiraiya said while aiding in the recovery of Gara and the Sunanin. He has told Gara that he believes Kakashi or even Naruto will defeat Hiroko, and it's up to Gara depending on whether he believes in Naruto's strength or not. As the war between Konoha and Suna is about to begin with ground combat troops and heavy artillery from both sides facing each other, Jiraiya appears above Gamabunta and gives to Suna the proof that Gara is still alive. At that moment, Gara moves to where Naruto, Sakura, and Sai are headed and stops them. He says that Naruto's will is not what Kakashi wants, and Naruto begins to fight Gara. Gara says that Naruto is too idealistic and that he doesn't have the power to make his goals become true. However, Naruto strongly says by the belief that as a fellow comrade, he cannot allow Kakashi to sacrifice himself. Naruto breaks through Gaara's shield of sand and punches him. The rest of the members of the Konoha 11 arrive to aid Team 10, and they bind the Chimera Beast with the help of Ten-Ten. By sending their chakra to the chains that were holding the beast, they ask Shikamaru to go and stop Naruto, Sai, and Sakura. Shikamaru greets Gaara, who tells him that he felt what Naruto feels in the battle. Shikamaru continues on. Meanwhile, Naruto reaches the final gate and realizes that this is the place they came to on their past mission. Naruto goes to Kakashi and tries to stop him, but Kakashi walks on with no response. When Naruto grabs his arm, he sees a seal on his wrist, and Sai tells him what it is. Shikamaru, who is finally caught up to them, reveals that Tsunade placed a seal on him so that they may defeat Hiroko at the sacrifice of Kakashi. Kakashi passes through the final gate before the temple. As Naruto, Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru approach the temple, Naruto hears Hiroko's voice and questions why he did this, and Hiroko answers by telling his story. He claims to have been a former friend of the Sanin, but he was not a skilled shinobi like they were. He was developing the Chimera technique, a jutsu that allowed him to create a synthetic body by combining several separate ones. After the third shinobi war, he was shocked when he saw Kakashi, not only because he had survived the battle, but because he received the Sharingan, a Kekai Genkai, from the original user Obito Uchiha. This gave Hiroko the idea to steal Kekai Genkai to become powerful like the Sanin. However, the 
Hokage found out of his research, and Hiroko was forced to flee. Hiroko appears in the shadows of the temple and welcomes Kakashi. Seeing it as the only way to save Kakashi, Naruto, Sakura, and Sai try to defeat Hiroko, although Shikamaru tries to stop them. Hiroko, using his four Kekagenkai, Storm Release, Dark Release, Steel Release, and Swift Release, defeats him with a left root. He then steps into the temple with Kakashi. Naruto stands up, deciding that he cannot give up. Shikamaru tries to stop him, saying that he must protect the unborn children of Konoha, the king. Naruto states that he'll protect them too, and that he loves Konoha for its shinobi, who will sacrifice himself to save another. However, deciding who will be sacrificed from the start is what Naruto wants, and Naruto believes that there is no future for the children of Konoha becomes a place like this. As Naruto walks away, Shikamaru sees Asuma in him and protects him from surrounding barrier tags with his shadow sewing technique. He states that Naruto has inherited the will of fire, trusting the future of Konoha to him. Naruto enters the temple, where Hiroko begins the absorption at the beginning of the eclipse. Suddenly, Kakashi's monkey Kyo Sharingan activates, and the space inside of the slime created by the Kamara technique begins to distort. Naruto, trying to save Kakashi, creates shadow clones and breaks into the slime with multiple Rasengans and pulls him out. Kakashi wakes up and asks Naruto why he's here with him, and then sighs that the plan failed. Hiroko is still alive, and he states that the eclipse hasn't ended yet, and releases a large amount of chakra, reducing the surrounding area to rubble. When Hiroko summons the Chimera Beast that the Konoha 11 were keeping restrained, Shikamaru, Sakura, and Sai fight the beast while Naruto and Kakashi face Hiroko. Shikamaru notes that Hiroko's weak spot is his chest, which is still hollow as it is the space that Hiroko wants to assimilate Kakashi into. As the Chimera Beast begins to gain an advantage over them, the other Konoha 11 arrive to help. Choji uses his multi size technique to become giant and attack the beast, followed by Kiba and Nakamura's fang passing fang, which destroys the beast's wings. Then from the sky, Hinata and Neji appear and attack the beast with the 8 trigram 64 palms. Lee kicks it into a mountain and Tenten finishes it off with the twin rising dragons, covering its body with a large number of kunai with explosive tags attached and detonating them. Meanwhile, Hiroko is gaining an advantage over Naruto and Kakashi, easily absorbing their techniques, the big ball Rasengan and lightning cutter. Hiroko gives Naruto a taste of his own attack, Rasengan, and returns Kakashi as lightning cutter. As a last minute resort, Naruto forms the wind release Rasen Shuriken and carries the impact to Hiroko's chest. Hiroko tries to absorb and copy it, but cannot combine the high level of shape manipulation with the high level of nature transformation. As the Rasen Shuriken's impact occurs, the Chimera dies as Tenten makes her explosive tags explode. In his final moments, Hiroko in his original form asks Kakashi what he did wrong. Kakashi tells him that he used others to overcome his weakness, and only try to become perfect himself. Hiroko says that this is the way the strong ones think, and that he did not have any comrades. Suddenly, Hiroko sees his old friends, Tsunade, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, the third Hokage, and some others appear before his eyes, as they tell him that they were there for him. Kakashi tells him that if he tried to bond with them, they would have helped him, and that he shouldn't have tried to do everything by himself. Hiroko then tells Kakashi that that's what Kakashi tried to do this time, abandoning his comrades. Kakashi said that he and Hiroko made the same mistake as they were both lost. Hiroko asks him if he has finally made a connection and dies. Kakashi looks over to see most of the gang cheering for him. He then says that Naruto had long surpassed him. Gara appears before the Sunanin army and tells him that everything has been solved and to withdraw. Tsunada and Jiraiya talk about how they have been saved and that the kids are completely different than they were at that age. They end the conversation with the conclusion that they are getting old, in a decision to leave the future in the hands of a young generation which they can freely put their faith into. The movie ends at Mount Shumisen when Kakashi is thinking about Obito. He smiles at Naruto after seeing the similarities between the two. Naruto takes a smile at something creepy and random. The Konoha 11 surround them on various parts of the rocky ledge, each giving their input on Kakashi's sexual orientation upon seeing this. Kakashi hurriedly denies their assumptions, but not before Naruto panics and flees from him. Kakashi then chases after the thing Naruto by trying to explain that it's a misunderstanding. Naruto should end the movie, The Lost Tower. Yamato, Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Harno, and Sai are assigned on a mission to capture Mukade and Missing Nin. They all have chakra blades which are used to attack. They set up for the once glorious historic ruins of Roran, a city that once had thousands of towers and is located in the middle of the desert. After bypassing the puppets, they corner the Missing Nin. Mukade's goal is revealed to be to travel to the past and take over the five great shinobi countries with the power of the Ryumyaku, an ancient chakra flow hidden deep underground in Roran. He unleashes the power of the Ryumyaku, which is seen to have been sealed by Minato's flying thunder god Kunai. A light envelops Naruto and Yamato, who are trying to stop Mukade. Sakura attempts to follow him into the light, but Sai stops Sakura from getting sucked into the Ryumyaku by catching her as Inkbird while she cries at Naruto's name. Minato Namikaze, 20 years prior to the present, is now seen in Konoha, and Jiraiya shows Minato that he is completely Rasengan. Then, the young Shizane Mike guy Asuma Saratobi and Kakashi Harake are seen waiting in a long line at the grand opening of Ramadi Chiraku. Hiruzen Saratobi has heard of Anro Kuzan's evil plans, and sends Minato Namikaze, Shibi Abarame, Choza Akimichi, and upon Minato's request, Kakashi Harake to put an end to his plans. When Naruto awakens, he meets a mysterious young girl who immediately runs away upon seeing him. Naruto later comes into contact with a masked guy who rescues him from a puppet army. He tells Naruto that he too is a Konoha ninja, opening a part of his mask to show the Konoha sign on his forehead protector, and tells him to leave the city. Naruto agrees to do so. Nevertheless, when he's about to leave Roran, Naruto remembers what happened before he lost his consciousness and decides to look for the others instead. Later, he realizes that there's a festival going on and spots the young girl he previously encountered, now realizing that she's queen of Roran Sara. When she greets the excited crowd who is calling for her joyously, someone pushes her back, causing her to fall. Naruto rescues her and they introduce themselves to each other after Sara mistakes him as a bad guy. Naruto asks her whether there are people who are after her and the young queen immediately disagrees with it, saying that Naruto has seen for himself that the crowd is very happy to meet her. Later, Naruto meets Minato again in the queen's palace. Minato scolds him for not keeping his promise, but Naruto tells him that he has no choice and tells him what happened to him. Seeing the circumstances, Minato and his team reveal themselves, and that time, Naruto remarks that Minato looks a lot like the fourth Hokage. Shibi tells Naruto it's impossible, as for now the ruling Hokage is still the third. But Choza disagrees, saying that as Naruto is from the future, it's possible that Minato really is the fourth. Minato simply replies that there's no point in making life less interesting by knowing things that they shouldn't. 
Minato then tells Naruto the condition at Roran, and tells him that he should be able to go back to his time after he defeats Mukade. After that, he gives Naruto his flying thunder god kunai, telling him that it's a special kunai that'll allow him to transport to Naruto's place if he uses it. It's later revealed that Mukade traveled to the past six years before Naruto did, and that by this point he's changed his name to Anro Kuzan, and serves as a minister of Roran. Sara refuses to believe that Anro Kuzan's planning to overthrow her, but soon hesitates after Naruto points at the fact that there is indeed someone who is after her life. Sara, much annoyed, leaves the place. Minato tells Naruto to protect her as he continues on the mission. Naruto agrees. When Sara is walking alone along the palace corridor, someone strikes her from behind and takes her to a dark room, filled with a large group of people. They insist Sara to return it, much to her confusion. Naruto enters the room to her aid, only to discover that the group is actually a group of women and children that don't mean to hurt Sara at the first place. Walking along the city, suddenly a child from the group says that Sara is said to be the puppet princess, only to be scolded by the leader of the group. Sara then asks her man about the rumor, to which she says it's quite true. She then tells Sara that most of the men of Roran were enlisted to work for the city by the queen's order, to which Sara replies that she never gave such an order from her palace. The people seem happy to see her. The leader then tells her that no one is actually happy. While staring at the crowd who is looking for Sara, the group realizes the puppet has taken over Sara's place and greets the crowd, much to her shock. Naruto notices there's something wrong with the crowd and reveals that the joyful crowd are all puppets that are being controlled by Rim Yaku's chakra, a puppet of Sara herself appearing on the balcony above. Sara then reveals the minister's evil doing. She then promises that she would rescue the people used by him. Naruto and Sara find the center of Anro Kuzan's evil plan. They infiltrate the factory and find all the men who are chained and forced to work to produce puppets. Confronting Anro Kuzan, Sara orders him to release the people there, to which he laughs and says Sara is a puppet princess. He then confessed that he killed Sara's mother, Saramu, the previous queen, because she had seen through his plan and refused to work with him. Now as Sara is no use to him anymore, he's going to kill her and take over the world. Naruto tells Sara that he will protect her. The puppet ninja force, which is under Anru Kuzan's control, can attack using the Ryumyaku's chakra, and are able to throw kunai. Naruto is seen using his chakra knife to attack them. Later, Anru Kuzan is seen to be a giant puppet, as he's able to use parts of the towers of Roran to repair himself from any attack, which is part of his regenerative technique with the power of the Ryumyaku. Shibi and Choza are not able to defeat him, as he keeps regenerating himself. Shibi then passes a message to Naruto and Minato, who are guarding Sara and the citizens to go to the garden, which is the source of Ryumyaku on account of Anru Kuzan being unable to reach it because it's heavily defended. When battling Anru Kuzan, Naruto uses Rasengan, much to Minato's shock. Naruto is easily defeated by Anro Kuzan, and Minato comes to his rescue just before Anro Kuzan deals the final blow. Minato then tells Naruto to follow the citizens while he's holding back Anro Kuzan from reaching them. Naruto agrees, but then asks himself why he always follows Minato's orders. Meanwhile, Minato is able to locate Anro Kuzan's weakness, but only to find that he cannot match its speed of regeneration. Anro Kuzan is able to get past him and aims to kill Sara, who is planning to steal the Rim Yaku for good. Minato then meets Naruto and tells him that he already figured out how to defeat Anro Kuzan, but he needs Naruto to perform a Sengan for him. When Naruto says he does not have enough chakra left, Minato tells him that he will lend him his chakra. Naruto says it's impossible that the only people who are able to perform a Sengan are Jiraiya himself and the fourth Okage. Minato smiles and tells Naruto that he's also able to perform a Sengan while effortlessly forming a Rasengan before Naruto. He then hands over his Rasengan to Naruto and forms another Rasengan, forming a new Rasengan as he tells Naruto that similar chakra tend to synchronize with each other, enhancing their powers. Sara seals off most of the Rim Yaku in time, making Anro Kuzan unable to use his regenerative technique. Minato goes off and tells Naruto that this is the time to attack him. Naruto succeeds in hitting him. Anro Kuzan says that this won't be over. As the floor crumbles, he falls down into a pool of the Rimyaku. Sara is seen on the crumbling floor, and Naruto manages to catch her, but falls in along with Minato. Yamato, who is still holding on to Kakashi, comes back and uses his wood release to catch Naruto, Sara, and Minato. Minato asks Naruto to give back his kunai and completely seal off the Rimyaku. A bright blue light shines as Minato seals the Rimyaku. Naruto and Yamato's bodies begin to glow. Minato says that since the Anro Kuzan is dead, his spell wore off, which means Naruto and Yamato will return to their time. When Yamato meets Minato, he bows to him and says that it is an honor to be able to meet him. Naruto is about to tell Yamato that Minato is the fourth Okage, but is interrupted by Minato who says it's time to say farewell. In order to prevent history from changing, Minato says it is best to erase everyone's memories. When Naruto asks Minato whether he has something to tell them, Minato replies that they're out of time. Naruto then begs him to tell him now because they may not have another chance. Minato says that he's sure that they would meet again, and that time Naruto would know what he wants to say. Naruto begins to ask Minato if he can possibly be his father, but Minato interrupts him and replies that if he ever had a son, he wishes he grew up to be an angel like Naruto. Sara then tells Naruto she'll never forget what he taught her. When Naruto and Yamato begin to fade, Sara smiles at Naruto and utters his name for the last time. In the present time, the Ryum Yaku that was unleashed by Mukare fades away. Sakura is still seen on Sai's inkbird crying out Naruto's name. When the light fades, Naruto and Yamato appear, but as Minato had said, they have no memory of what happened to them. Outside the ruins, the team is approached by a young girl who resembles Sara, who claims that she felt a disturbance in the Ryum Yaku. The girl says that she's the daughter of the former Queen of Roran, which was destroyed during the war. The girl bears a Konoha chakra blade and tells him that her mother received from a hero in a dream. Naruto then notices that his own chakra blade is missing. As the girl and her people leave the ruins, Naruto claims that he has the feeling that he saw her in a dream. Sakura then grabs and pulls on Naruto's ear and yells at him for being a pervert. Naruto the movie, Blood Prison! A discusses a box of Omoe, Karui, Samuri, and Mabui, and suddenly gas covers the room, knocking everyone asleep. Then a hooded figure leaps out, attacking the sleeping Rikage, only for the figure to stop right before killing A. When A is seen above the figure, the figure dodges and is able to equally fight with A. In the battle, A is able to destroy the hood, revealing the hooded figure as Naruto Uzumaki. Taking advantage of A's shock, Naruto escapes. The team Samui and Mabui wake up, A tells them to summon Killer B. In Konohakakure, Tsunade states that Naruto is wanted for attempting to assassinate the leader of Kumagakure, the Raikage, and killing Jonin from Kumagakure and Iwagakure, showing wanted posters of Naruto from Iwagakure and Kirigakure to Team Kakashi. 
Naruto and Sakura refuse the claims, but Tsunade states Naruto will be placed in the Hozuki Castle, a criminal containment facility also known as the Blood Prison in Kusagakure. Naruto attempts to escape, only for Yamato to encase him, and Tsunade takes away his forehead protector. When Naruto arrives at the Hozuki Castle, Mui, the head of the prison, quickly places the fire release heavenly prison on Naruto, sealing his chakra. Naruto learns this the hard way after using his shadow clones. Naruto quickly collapses from the pain caused by the seal. Naruto is later taken captive by Marai, who's working for Mui. When Naruto is brought to a lab, Mui realizes that the Naruto taken was a clone. While the real Naruto was hiding, he used the chance to escape, but the pain from the seal made him pass out. After being caught, he was taken into solitary confinement. While in solitary confinement, he hears a mysterious voice say that if he can defeat Moi, then the seal will disappear. Naruto then, after being released, attacks Moi, but the seal causes Naruto to collapse, and he's taken back into solitary confinement. Moi questions Naruto's devotion to his home, wondering why he bothered being loyal. When Naruto is released, he's looked up to by the rest of the prisoners. Naruto later attempts to escape again by knocking at one of the guards and taking his clothes, when his shadow clone fools everyone. As he is able to get to the edge of the island where Ryuzetsu tells him to stop, Naruto refuses to listen as he jumps into the whirlpool. He nearly drowns, but Ryuzetsu saves him. Naruto thought she was a boy, but later sees that she's a girl, and that her mission is to kill Mui and stop the box of ultimate bliss. She reveals that Mui even sacrificed his son, Muku, to the box, and that Mui set Naruto up. She asks for Naruto's help to destroy the box. Naruto agreed. In the next day, Naruto challenges Moi again, but is defeated and taken to solitary confinement. When Naruto is confined, Ryuzetsu attempts to stab Moi, only to reveal that she attacked Maroi. Maroi forms an alliance with her, saying that he's not really on Moi's side, but that he's just on the side that benefits him the most. When Naruto is asked to leave the punishment room, he uses a clone to gather the symmetrical energy because he intends on using Sage Mode. Naruto and Ryuzetsu pretend to fight, engulfing the entire courtyard in the fright, while Maroi forces prisoners inside the fight as well, creating chaos. In the chaos, Mari performs a technique in the sky while Naruto tries to find the box. Just before he's able to destroy the box, he's captured by Mui. Mui extracts some of Naruto's chakra, allowing the box to revive. Naruto is able to escape. Mui then reveals that his wish is to bring back his son. The box grants his wish, opening up, allowing a grown-up Muku to walk out. Muku then impaled Mui with his own hand and knocked out Kazan. Muku then transformed into Satori. When all chaos breaks out, Naruto enters Sage Mode and then tried to use the Big Ball Rasengan on the box of Ultimate Bliss to destroy it, but he fails. Naruto then is engaged with combat with Satori, but fails because he's unable to touch him. So he summons Gamabunta to help combat Satori, but they can't attack him due to their moves being predicted beforehand. Eventually, Naruto runs out of Senjutsu, allowing Satori to attack Naruto. This forced Gamabunta to defend him, causing Gamabunta to be defeated. Satori then attacks Naruto again, but is saved by Killer B. Naruto is amazed that Killer B and all his friends have gathered there. As Naruto wonders why this is happening, Tsunade reveals that it was Naruto's mission to destroy the box and that no one believed that Naruto really committed any of the crimes. It was also revealed that Mario was a friend of Killer B's and that he was a mysterious voice. Naruto decides to attain Sage Mode once again and tells Killer B and the others to distract Satori when he does this. Naruto is able to realize that Satori cannot read the minds of people, but he can read their fears, allowing Naruto to fight Satori evenly in Sage Mode. Naruto attempted to end the battle by creating a larger Sengon with two clones. However, Satori impels him with Ryuzetsu in the way. Naruto is able to wake Mui up and uses his shadow clones to hold Satori's wings, pushing Satori back and therefore allowing Mui to weaken it. Naruto uses this time to free him and Ryuzetsu, and defeats Satori by firing a wind release Rasen Shuriken, returning Satori back to normal. Muku kills both his father and himself, and apologizes to Ryuzetsu for not keeping his promise. The prisoners attempt to escape, but are stopped by Naruto's friends. After capturing all the prisoners, Sakura tries to heal a dying Naruto, but has no success, until Ryuzetsu revives Naruto by using a Kekai Genkai with the cost of her life. In the aftermath, Mui and Ryuzetsu were shown to be buried next to each other. Naruto then ties Ryuzetsu's bandana around her gravestone, promising to cherish the life she returned to him, and re-quoting what she had said about being a guiding light by protecting the things people cherish. Road to Ninja, Naruto the Movie The movie starts with a flashback to the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, which then flashes forward to the present timeline where the eight members of Akatsuki, who are meant to be dead, are actually alive and battling the Konoha Shinobi, and this in turn unsettles Sakura. Shigamaru states that there's no point wondering why the dead are back alive, and quickly comes up with a counter plan, but Naruto quickly attacks Akatsuki head-on, forcing the rest of the Konoha 11 plus Sai, Kakashi, and Gai to attack. The battle continues until Naruto is caught by Kakuzu. Sai frees Naruto by cutting off part of Kakuzu's arm, causing the Akatsuki to retreat. Naruto and his friends return to the village, where most of Naruto's peers are congratulated by the families, all of whom promise to write a recommendation letter for the promotion of being Jonin, although Sakura has a little fight with her family who embarrass her in front of the others. As Naruto returns home, he passes many families making him reminisce about his father and mother causing him to feel lonely. Later, while eating at the Ichiraku Ramen, he meets Iruka. He then asks Iruka for a letter of recommendation of his own, but Iruka refuses as Naruto is only a Genin and must become a Chunin to rise through the ranks just as Minato and all the other Jonin did. Naruto is saddened by his lonely lifestyle and so storms off saying that no one seems to understand him, and also he doesn't feel like the extra Menma on his ramen, which adds to his present state of mind and causes him to feel lonely. He meets Sakura, who had an argument with her family, who also stormed out, grabbing Naruto's hand and telling him to go on a date with her. When Sakura complains about her family, Tobi appears in front of them and after a small scuffle, he activates the limited Tsukiyomi. Naruto and Sakura are absorbed in a flash of light, and later find themselves in the same park they were in before with no signs of a fight or Tobi himself. They run into their friends, including Sasuke, which surprises both Sakura and Naruto, but with different personalities, and to add to the confusion, no one knows who Tobi is. They realize they're in another world where Sakura's father was the fourth Okage, who saved the village instead of Minato, and in this world, Naruto is named Menma instead. As Naruto and Sakura return home, Sakura is happy with the new freedom she has, while Naruto hurries home to his apartment hoping to see his parents, only to find that he does not live there. Meanwhile, in the present, Tobi reveals that the dead Akatsuki members in the beginning were only Zetsu clones. In the Genjutsu world, a man in a mask meets Tobi and they agree to work together. 
Elsewhere, as Sakura is looking through her dresser, she sees the fourth Hokage coat that Naruto's father wore in the present, causing her to once again realize that in this world, it was her father who was the Hokage. She then meets Sasuke, who gives her a flower and flirts with her. Naruto and Sakura meet in the morning to try to gather more information about the current world, although Sakura enjoys this world as she has more freedom and is well loved by the village thanks to her father's actions. Naruto, on the other hand, wants to return home as fast as possible. Naruto and Sakura meet Tsunade and Shizune, who tell them that a masked man attacked Kumogakure and killed their Jinchuriki, which Naruto and Sakura believe to have been Tobi. They then meet Naruto's parents, who are alive in this world. Minato says that Jirai died finding the Red Moon Scroll, and it was said to save the world. Tsunade lets Naruto and Sakura join Minato and Kushina on their mission while Kakashi and Guy return. Sakura is shocked to finding out who Naruto's parents are, while Naruto is angry that Tobi would dare make copies of his dead parents, and swears to break the Genjutsu. While Sakura is still enjoying her life, she wonders how Naruto is doing. While Naruto attempts to ignore his parents, he sees an album showing how his life would have been if his parents had been alive. In the morning, Sakura notices that this world's Kakashi and Gai switch personalities, with Kakashi showing more excitement and displaying a positive attitude, and Gai complaining about having to do two missions back to back with a tired, uninterested attitude, while Naruto isolates himself from his parents at every turn. They soon locate where Jirai hid the scroll, but the group stops the rest. Naruto charges ahead until he's confronted by the appearance of Gamabunta, Gamahiro, and Gamaken. They refuse to listen to Naruto and the group who explain their reason for being there, and attack them with an army of frogs. But while trying to gather enough energy, Kushina interferes and tries to protect him from Gamabuta, but a shot of acid burns her legs. As a result, Naruto gets distracted and is unable to enter stage mode. Minato then saves both of them quickly and is able to get the scroll, dispelling the summoning technique. As Sakura heals Kushina, Naruto still attempts to brush off his parents, causing Minato to say no matter what Naruto does, they will always try to save him, as that's what they naturally tend to do as parents. Kushina then awakes and hugs Naruto, causing him to break down in tears and finally accept from his parents. They return to Konoha, where Tsunade locks the scroll in the village's safe, until the night where a red moon will appear when they can use the scroll to fulfill the said prophecy. As Naruto and Sakura walk home together, Naruto quickly runs home saying that he has something to do, leaving Sakura alone. Sakura finds her home too lonely and wonders if Naruto always felt this way. As she walks to town, she sees happy families, only making her more sad. She then realizes that this world Sasuke is just a flirt as she sees him flirting with a group of girls, and decides that Naruto was right on his decision to quickly break the Genjutsu they're trapped in and wishes to return to their own world. As she walks to Naruto's home to try to find a way to break the Genjutsu, she sees how happy Naruto is and wonders if they should really leave. Sakura later meets Naruto and asks if he wants to stay. Although he denies it, he later thinks to himself that he truly does not want to leave. At that moment, an explosion occurs at the Hokage's office where the masked man from earlier asks for the scroll they brought back. He overpowers Minato, Kushina, and Tsunade, and then Naruto and Sakura arrive. They realize that this is the man Tsunade was talking about, and he knows Tobi. He overpowers Naruto and Sakura and kidnaps Sakura in exchange for the scroll. He then uses Great Spiraling Ring, destroying a large part of Konoha, and leaves. As Naruto decides to save Sakura, but Minato and Kushina try to prevent him in fear of him dying, showing that the parents in this world are different from Naruto's real parents. He takes one of Minato's kunai and the scroll, leaving with Sakura's father's Hokage coat. Sakura is tied up and meets Tobi, who is a ghost, saying they're in an old training ground that Minato and Jiraiya used. Naruto arrives, but is attacked by the other masked man asking for the scroll. Naruto is unable to fight properly as his stomach acts up, and the masked man then takes the time to summon the nine masked beasts, and about to kill Naruto when the Akatsuki arrives and saves him. The Akatsuki was hired by Tsunade to help Naruto, and they deal with the masked beast, and then Naruto attacks the masked man. Itachi saves Sakura, and Tobi decides to escape instead. The Akatsuki defeats the masked beast, which then turn into nine fox kits, while Naruto chased the masked man into the training grounds. They then fight. Naruto uses sage mode, and then uses the wind release Rasen Shuriken to counter the masked man's great spiraling ring. It ends in a draw, but the attacks destroy the masked man's mask, showing that he is Menma, this world's Naruto. Menma informs Naruto that the pulsating inside his stomach must be Kurama's reaction to the Black Nine Tails within Menma. Menma then calls back to the defeated masked beasts and summon Kurama's counterpart, the Black Nine Tails. Naruto was unable to attack while the Akatsuki retreat, taking Sakura with them. Not wanting to be manipulated by the Sharingan again, Kurama makes a truce with Naruto to work together, allowing him to summon Kurama out of his body. In the battle, Naruto is barely able to win, but Tobi reveals that this was his plan, to have Naruto and Menma fight, as doing so would cause the two foxes to fight and weaken Kurama. As he possessed Menma, Kurama warned Naruto if he took Menma's Sharingan, it would all be over, for Tobi planned to extract Kurama out of Naruto the exact same way he extracted from Kushina 16 years ago. As Menma overpowers Naruto, the latter tries to use a scroll when he realizes the moon is turned red, but Menma cuts the scroll, causing Naruto to look into Menma's eyes. Naruto's memories are erased, but Sakura rescues him before Kurama is extracted from him. Naruto, in an amnesiac stupor, stares at the destroyed red moon scroll, which brings back memories of his training to learn the Rasengan with Jiraiya, and how his father was the one who invented the technique. Naruto is able to break free of the Genjutsu just in time to save Sakura, and then defeats Tobi the same way his father did, Breaking the limited Tsukiyomi. Tobi, using his ghost body, attacks again until Minato and Kushina arrive. Tobi decides to give up and exits the Genjutsu world just as Naruto and Sakura are enveloped in a bright light, preparing to return to their world as well. But beforehand, Naruto thanks Minato and Kushina, who quickly go to assist Benma, who is returning to his original state as their son. Naruto and Sakura return to their world, where Naruto's Hokage coat breaks down since it was only part of the Genjutsu world, not real. Naruto and Sakura tell Tsunade and Kakashi what happened and sets out more guard patrols since Tobi was easily able to enter the village further than they imagined. Shizune also brings up the topic of the letter's recommendation for the beginning of the movie, to which Tsunade replies that she has no intention of promoting any of Naruto's friends to Joni. As they both return home, Naruto watches Sakura as she meets her parents, happily hugging them. He approaches her, asking her out on a date, but Sakura tells him that they just came back from the longest date ever, much Naruto's shock. As Naruto goes home, he sees Iruka in his house, waiting to apologize to him. Afterwards, Naruto happily jumps roof to rooftop through the village while quoting that the road of the ninja is one who endures. After the credits, the sign in Ichiraku Ramen where it says Menma is changed. The last, Naruto the movie. 
The film starts off with an explanation of Kaguya Otsutsuki consuming the chakra fruit, the birth of the ten tails, and the sage of six paths stopping the beast and creating the tailed beasts. It then moves over to the fight battles between Asura Otsutsuki and Indra Otsutsuki, to Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju, and the ending conflict between Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. Before enrolling in the academy, a young Hinata Hyuga is seen being bullied by boys over a Byakugan, calling her a monster which causes her to cry. Naruto shows up and tells him to back off, proclaiming that he'll be the future Okage. However, the boys outnumber him and easily beat him up and tear his red scarf. Hinata thanks Naruto for his efforts and Naruto lets her keep the scarf since it's ruined, unaware that this is when the young girl's affections began for Naruto. Sometime later at the academy, Iruka Umino tells his stories to write down the name of the person they would want to be with if the world was to end today. Though Naruto tries to act tough towards Sakura Harano, she ignores him for Sasuke. While Hinata is unsure whose name to write, she sees Naruto making a paper plan with his paper which leads him to be scolded by Iruka. Naruto goes on to state that he has no friends or family, and that the world isn't going to end. Seeing this, Hinata happily writes Naruto's name on her paper. In the present time, two years after the Four Shinobi World War, Hiyashi Hyuga, accompanied by two subordinates, met with Tenario Satsuki at Sadakona Kakure. Asking for an answer to his earlier proposition, stating the fate of the Hyuga clan depends on Hiyashi's answer, he declines Tenario's offer. Engaging in combat, Hiyashi is overwhelmed by his puppet army and trapped in a cave. In Konoha, Naruto is invited to teach Academy students Taijutsu, much to the joy of the young boys. The lesson, however, is interrupted by a crowd of young girls that greatly admire Naruto, much to his confusion. Yino, Choji, and Chikamaru spot this, noting how popular he's gotten since the war. He has since then received various gifts from Konoha villagers and abroad from young women spin with him as the hero of the world. Later, Konoha Mara meets up with Naruto and wishes to take him to his late grandfather's old storage shed, claiming that there's something for him. Elsewhere in Konoha, Hinata knits a red scarf in remembrance of the one Naruto used to wear back in the Academy, so she can give it to Naruto at the Rinai Festival as a personal gift of love when she confesses her love for him. She is later found by Sakura who encourages her to give it to him and win his heart. Meanwhile, the five Kage, the sixth Okage, Kakashi Harake, the fifth Kazakage, Gara, fifth Mizukage, Meitarumi, fourth Raikage, A, and third Tsuchikage, Onoki, have an emergency meeting in regards to the threat of the moon, which is revealed to be falling out of orbit and onto the earth. They deduce that if nothing is done soon, then the moon will break apart and crash into the earth and kill all life on the planet. At night, Hinata finishes her gift for Naruto and attempts to give it to him, but her shyness stops her from doing so. Hanabi Hyuga playfully encourages her to give it to him, while warning her sister that there are various girls after him now as well. She meets Naruto, Sakura, Ino, and Choji at Ramani Chiraku. Just as she sits down to eat, three Konoichi show up and start being affectionate towards Naruto. After seeing this, Hinata decides to leave, to which Sakura tells Naruto to walk her home. However, he doesn't understand why he has to, given her powerful abilities. Sakura catches up to Hinata, telling her Naruto is very dense about love due to not having anyone in his life to express it for him, and assures Hinata she'll be able to win him over if she's confident enough. Meanwhile, various puppets secretly invade Konoha and raid the Hyuga estate, kidnapping Hanabi in the process. On the outskirts of the village, Sai paints a portrait and spots one of Hanabi's captors flying overhead and falls behind. However, after a quick chase, Sai was taken down by a blast. Back in Konoha in front of Naruto's home, Hinata practices her confession, but is interrupted by Naruto's arrival. After noticing a scarf around Naruto's neck, Hinata's stomach growls. This notions Naruto to invite her to eat ramen in his apartment, but runs off embarrassed, much to his confusion. As Hinata sits on a park swing, she begins to cry, saying she's happy for him and thinking that she lost her chance to be with him. Just there, Toneri appears before Hinata, claiming that he came for her. She's rendered unconscious by Toneri, who affirms the strength of her chakra of Hamada as Naruto shows up and gives chase. Naruto is able to save her from her kidnapper, but the scarf she knitted is ripped as a result of her chakra being distorted. Tenere leaves a message that the end of mankind is approaching and he will return for Hinata. As he leaves, Naruto and Hinata witness a meteor crash outside the village. With Hanabi captured by Tenere, Naruto, Hinata, Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru are deployed by Kakashi to go and rescue her. To accommodate for the mission, Shikamaru is given a special clock only held by the five Kage, which apparently counts down the time till Doomsday. As the group follow Tenere's tail, courtesy of Sai, Hinata finds Hanabi's kunai and puts it in her bag where Naruto sees the rift scarf. They eventually find a cave with a secret path towards Tenere's location. Hinata is unable to use her Byakugan due to a lake distorting her vision for an unknown reason. Naruto proceeds to make sure his scarf is not wet, proclaiming it to be special to him, leading Sakura to state that it can't be that important, and Hinata feels upset. Sai realizes that the water is incapable of making them wet. They then dive into the lake only to discover it is a genjutsu set by Tenere. They're all trapped in their own memories from the past as Naruto recalls his fight with Kiba Inazuka in the Chunin exams. Hinata's scarf begins to wrap around Naruto and her memories flood into his, causing him to remember her fight with pain, her confession of love to him, her writing his name on their paper in the academy, and Hinata and Sakura's talk about giving him her scarf. Naruto is left utterly bewildered by how she's loved him for so long. Before it can sink in, Sakura dispels the genjutsu placed on everyone. As they descend further, Hinata is found by Toneri who calls her the Byakugan princess and announces his desire for them to be married. Hinata refuses, demanding the safe return of his sister. Toneri then reveals he has taken her sister's Byakugan and if Hinata agrees to his proposal, he will spare both Hinata and Hanabi's lives and eventually return Hanabi's Byakugan. While Sakura, Sai, and Shikamaru fight against the gatekeeper of the spring, Naruto comes back to protect Hinata and fights Teneri, only for the two to realize Teneri is a puppet. The Teneri puppet explains he will return in person to hear Hinata's answer. Now knowing Teneri is targeting Hinata, Naruto proclaims he will not let Hinata out of his sight, having realized his own romantic feelings for her as well. With this, Hinata notices Naruto isn't wearing the scarf anymore. The team arrives outside the village, seeing an artificial sun inside the moon. They make their way to an abandoned shinobi village of the Otsutsuki clan. At some point, Toneri takes Hanabi's Byakugan, which he remarks is incredibly pure after he implants it in his own empty eye sockets, awakening the Tensaigon sealed by Hamura's descendants over the last millennium. He tells his guards he will go after Hinata, but not until his eyes are adjusted. As Naruto and Hinata spend more time with each other, she remains humorously oblivious to his love for her. As Hinata runs into a spider web, she screams, having Naruto rush to her as he picks the web out of her hair, making her blush. Hinata asks Naruto why he took off his scarf, to which Naruto states he feels fine without it. Naruto then falls down some stairs and hurts his back. 
With Naruto unable to reach his bruised spot, Hinata proceeds to rub ointment on his back, which leaves Naruto rather pleased. As they search the ruins, Shikamaru realizes Tanari's plan and that he is the orchestrator of the falling moon. With Hinata's arrival, a monument of the clan awakens for her, revealing a puppet, which calls her the Byakugan Princess and shows her a vision of Hamura. Hamura awakes her latent Hamura chakra, transfers his own, and orders her to stop Toneri as only she can destroy the Ten Saigon as she is the Byakugan princess, and that Toneri, a member of the Otsutsuki's branch house, has misinterpreted his celestial degree. When Hinata awakens, she tells the others what she saw was nothing. Later that night, Naruto follows Hinata to a pond, seeing her knit away at a scarf. Naruto consoles her when Hinata thinks she's a horrible big sister since she just knits a scarf rather than spending more energy to find her sister. Naruto disagrees, recounting the amount of time and energy she's been putting into finding Hanabi. When Hinata thanks him for his reassuring kindness, a flustered Naruto accidentally reveals his newfound feelings for her, leaving her greatly shocked. However, the tender moment is interrupted by Toneri's arrival. This time, Hinata freely goes with Toneri after giving the refurbished scarf to Naruto. Before having his chakra jammed by Toneri, Naruto chased after them, only to be shocked by Hinata's not denying Toneri's statement that they would be married. The resulting explosion of Naruto's vast chakra destroys a massive part of the moon and shreds Hinata's scarf yet again, leaving her heartbroken at Teneri's assault on Naruto, forcing him to put her into a slumber. Back on Earth, the various hidden villages defend themselves against crashing meteorites as they protect civilians all over from Teneri's genocidal assault. As Rock Lee and others fail to completely destroy a huge meteor, Sasuke arrives and saves Konoha from certain doom, revealing he rescued Hiyashi. Sasuke then declares he'll defend Konoha since Naruto is away and gives Konoha Ninja a much needed break. Elsewhere, as Naruto is being healed by Sakura, she notes the injuries are quite serious. Naruto mutters Hinata's name, and Sakura notes that he finally realizes his feelings for her. Back on the moon at Teneri's palace, Teneri marvels at Hinata's beauty as she sleeps. Wanting to know more about her, he reads her mind only to see that she's thinking about Naruto, much to his confusion and jealousy. When she awakens, she finds her sister safe, but even while in a comatose state, Hanabi grabs Hinata silently begging for help. Teneri arrives and gives Hinata a vast army of puppet maids to do her bidding and gives her a tour of his palace. Here, Teneri tells her about his clan and how they should use the Ten Saigon against their enemies, this case being mankind who used Chakra as a weapon, and thus intends to wipe them out as per Hamura's celestial decree. After showing Hinata the mausoleum of Hamura and having dinner, Teneri requests Hinata to make him a scarf like she did Naruto, and orders her to never question his plans to destroy Earth again. Later, upon seeing a floating island in front of the castle, Teneri explains that it's a temple of Hamura, and it comes nearby his castle once a year during the Renai Festival. He then takes her to the floating temple after Hinata says that she personally wants to pay homage, saying that Hamura must be happy for her offer. Hinata realizes she couldn't find the Ten Saigon somewhere in the moon, so she finds a hidden location of Byakugan. While Teneri rests from his inability to control the Ten Saigon, Hinata attempts to destroy the Ten Saigon altar as per Hamura's request, only to be stopped by Teneri. Angered by her lies and betrayals, Teneri destroys her scarf in a jealous rage, proclaiming he knew full well she made it for Naruto. He then brainwashes her by placing his green chakra sphere within her body, so that she will still go through with getting married. Meanwhile, following a three-day recovery process, Naruto awakens and becomes depressed about Hinata's choice, leading Shikamaru inside to scold and make fun of him in hopes of reigniting his drive, only to fail. Shikamaru then takes Naruto to Sakura, revealing that she was severely weakened due to saving his life in the hopes that she would restore his fighting spirit, something he Sai and himself are nowhere near capable of. Sakura then talks with Naruto and helps him realize that Hinata truly loves him, stating she noted the feelings he had for herself were just another way to compete with Sasuke. But Naruto's feelings for Hinata are far more genuine and deeper than they were for herself, and Hinata's love for Naruto is much more genuine. With newfound strength, Naruto leads the charge into Teneri's moon base. Naruto's team invades the palace and splits up. Sai and Sakura are going to rescue Hanabi, while Shikamaru and Naruto go after Hinata. As Shikamaru holds off Teneri's puppets, Naruto arrives just in time to stop Teneri from kissing Hinata, angering Teneri, who leads her to the room of rebirth. To humiliate Naruto, Teneri forces the brainwashed Hinata to attack him, but he manages to remove the orbiting body. After Teneri pulls Hinata towards him, he tries to put another green orb in her body, but his latest Ten Saigon pulsation allows Hinata to escape from Teneri, and after apologizing to him, she leads Naruto to the energy vessel. With their combined efforts, they're able to destroy the vessel, revealing numerous Byakugan sealed inside, which stops the moon from plumbing to the earth. After regrouping with everyone, Sakura presents Hinata with the remnants of her scarf, to which Naruto reveals that he knows it was for him after seeing her memories. Despite being ruined, Naruto happily takes it, which leaves Hinata on the brink of tears of joy. Just then, Shikamaru notices the Doomsday Clock has began again for some reason. Back on Earth, A and Killer B use a massive chakra cannon to destroy the meteor heading from Earth, and upon learning of the moon still approaching, intends to use the cannon to destroy the moon. Kakashi is then told by Hiyashi that it is certain that Teneri took his daughters to the moon. After observing Kurama battling on the moon, Hiyashi's theory is confirmed. Despite now being informed that Naruto and his team are on the moon, A wishes to destroy the moon regardless. The other Kage are against this, angry that A once again has a weapon of mass destruction secretly hidden away, and order him to wait for an hour as they feel that Naruto can't stop the moon given his actions during the previous war. Meanwhile, at the destroyed energy vessel, a furious Teneri manages to unlock the Ten Saigon, allowing him to continue his view of the Celestial Decree. Teneri then summons a giant golem that battles Kurama as he unlocks the Ten Saigon Chakra Mode. He captures Hinata, throwing her into a cage so she can watch him kill Naruto, who he has grown to despise. A huge duel ensues, Teneri revealing his newfound power to slice the moon in half. Near the end of the fight, Naruto grasps the last remaining shred of the scarf Hinata made for him, and seemingly redirects and channels his chakra shroud into the scrap in his right fist and delivers a devastating punch, which is enough to depower Teneri and pin him against a wall. With his defeat, Kurama uses this chance to destroy the golem with a tailed beast ball and allows Hinata to retrieve Hanabi's Byakugan. Despite his defeat, Teneri refuses to give up and summons all the Byakugan eyes around him to grant him the power to kill Naruto by draining his chakra, but Hinata stops him from absorbing his chakra anymore. 
With Teneri unable to maintain his form and is about to burn in the sun, Naruto saves him. With the hour up, A prepares to fire the cannon, but B refuses to kill Naruto and the others, much to A's frustration. Lakari Kurama writes on the moon, mission complete symbol, much to the fox's annoyance as he admits his penmanship is terrible, signifying everyone is safe and the disaster is averted. As a global declaration is made that Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru, Sakura, and Sai have saved the planet from extinction, it is revealed that before returning to Earth and saving Teneri, that Hinata took Teneri to the site of Hamura's soul and the truth is revealed to him. Seeing this, Teneri apologizes for his actions and chooses to stay on the moon to atone for his sins and promises that the moon will never approach Earth ever again, despite Hinata and Naruto offering him a place on Earth. Later, Hinata asks Naruto about a scarf he was using earlier, to which he reveals it was knitted by his late mother before he was born, which is why he's so protective of it, leaving Hinata relieved and embarrassed by her actions. As they all head home on Hanabi's request, Naruto proclaims Hinata he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, which moves her to tears. As they leave through the portal, a glimpse of their future lives together is shown, and is followed by them seeing past versions of themselves and Naruto's past selves wearing the red scarf she knitted all while running out of the cave hand in hand as the portals fall apart. Hinata falls but is called by Naruto who tells her not to let go, to which she happily states she never wants to, and then they fly out of the cave, leaving the others behind at the exit. While floating in the sky with the moon behind them, they lean in and share their first kiss. The movie ends with a series of flash forwards of Naruto and Hinata's wedding. It further flash forwards to them having a peaceful morning with their two children, Boruto Uzumaki and Himawari Uzumaki, who playfully order their father to play with them, instigating the happy family into a snowball fight. Boruto, Naruto the movie. In the ruins of Kagi Otsutsuki's palace, Sasuke Uchiha is battling a mysterious shinobi after recovering a scroll that Kagi had hidden away many centuries ago. After Sasuke narrowly avoids a powerful attack using Amana Tachikara, another shinobi with similar appearance reveals himself, having watched the battle from afar, intrigued by Sasuke's possession of the Rinnegan. During a mission to capture a panda slash bear, Boruto Uzumaki shows off his newly mastered shadow clone technique and declares the animal as a panda, but Sarada Uchiha argues that it's a bear. Because they're childhood friends and rivals, and that she's always watching him, Boruto feels the need to look good in front of Sarada. Boruto gets in Sarada's way as he moves to capture the angry panda slash bear, and he uses shadow clones to subdue it, and Sarada is angry at Boruto for getting in her way. Mitsuki tells her to leave everything to Boruto because, as the son of the seventh Hokage and the grandson of the fourth Hokage, Boruto might become the next Hokage, causing Sarada to angrily reply that she will be the Hokage. Konohamaru shows off his kote and captures the bear with the shadow imitation technique and then shows it to the kids and creates a Rasengan which leaves them in awe, but it veers off course and accidentally destroys the local farm. When they report to Naruto Uzumaki, who insists that Boruto would dress him as seventh rather than dad in his office, Boruto insists that the mission was so easy that he could have done it on his own and Naruto lectures him on the importance of teamwork. This angers Boruto who instead argues on how his father focuses more on his Okage duties and their family. Boruto warns Naruto to be at Himori's birthday party or else he will never forgive him. Katasuke comes into Naruto's office to ask for Naruto's permission to use the Kote in the Chunin exams, but Naruto refuses on the ground that the instrument defeats the purpose of the exams, which is nurturing new ninja. As the scientist leaves, Boruto tells Naruto this is not the lame era Naruto grew up in before swimming out of the office. Boruto visits Katasuke to get new software for his video games, and the scientist asks him if he wants to enter in the tuning exams, which Boruto says no. However, Boruto is surprised when Katasuke tells him that Hokage will be in attendance of the exams. Boruto later meets up with Shiga Dainara and Inojin Yamanaka to play video games before he's joined by Sarada and Mitsuki, who inform him that Konohamaru sent them to give him his application to the tuning exams. Boruto says he doesn't plan to participate, and Mitsuki says they need a three-man or else they can't apply. When Boruto replies that he doesn't care, Sarada becomes angry and tells him that her dream is to become Hokage, and that he is keeping her from getting closer to her dream. Boruto retorts that he doesn't plan to participate in the exams because he doesn't want to be Hokage, and tells Sarada that if she plans to become Hokage, she better be alone for the rest of her life or else it will cause problems to the people around her. Inojin asks Boruto to help him and Shigadai beat the boss of the game, and Boruto gives him his data to make the game easier. But this only upsets them because Boruto is cheating and they leave, which confuses him. Realizing that Boruto is just upset at his father for spending less time with him, Sarada tries to cheer him up by suggesting that they enter the exams to drop their amazing skills and impress Naruto. Remembering that Naruto will be watching the exams, Boruto agrees. When asked by Boruto if her father will come watch her in the exams, Sarada says she doubts it. While talking about Sarada's father, Mitsuki comments that his parents told him only Sasuke can fight evilly against Naruto. Before they ask Mitsuki about his parentage, Hinata and Himawari arrive to pick Boruto up to prepare for Himawari's birthday party. When Boruto learns that Naruto sent a shadow clone as a standard for Himori's birthday party, Boruto lashes at his mother's chest on the Naruto's job as Hokage is very difficult but is very important for the village. Boruto further retorts that Naruto must have been lucky to experience the joy of having no parents, which upsets Hinata as she tells him that unlike Naruto, Boruto does have a father here. Boruto, however, replies that it's not about him but Himawari, and then he walks away. He goes to Naruto's study and finds his father's old tattered jacket, and after declaring it to be uncool, he throws it out the window to fit a rage. Thinking Naruto was at the front door, Boruto is ready to punch him in the face before he sees that it's Sasuke instead, who has returned to Konoha to warn Naruto of the threat he encountered in another dimension. Hinata informs Sasuke that Naruto is still in his office and he turns to leave, while Boruto realizes that Sasuke is his father's rival and he starts to admire him. Sasuke finds Naruto's old jacket in the middle of the street after Boruto threw it out of the window. Having taken the jacket with him, Sasuke meets with Naruto in his office, returns the jacket, and discusses a scroll to be obtained from Kagi's abandoned castle, but he needs help deciphering because not even his Rinnegan can help. Sasuke says he met Boruto and the boy turned out to be just like Naruto who insists that Boruto reminds him of how Sasuke was like when he was younger. However, Naruto reacts by saying that Boruto is not either of them because he has never had to work hard as a ninja, and the pristine condition of his clothes serve as an example. They then make a bet on whether the nature of a shinobi has changed in regards to Boruto, to which Sasuke says it hasn't, and Naruto says it has. After leaving Naruto's office and on his way to go see his family, Sasuke is attacked by Boruto, whom he easily defeats by getting behind the boy and tripping him. Boruto asks Uncle Sasuke to take him on as a student because there's something he wants to defeat. 
Unimpressed, Sasuke asks Boruto if he can perform the Rasengan, to which Boruto says no. And Sasuke tells Boruto that he can't be a student if he doesn't know how to use the technique. Boruto then goes to Konohamaru in the middle of the night to ask him to teach him how to perform the Rasengan, and Konohamaru agrees due to his belief that it would be an honor. Boruto, however, is dismayed to start off training with a water balloon and then a rubber ball. But after Konohamaru tells him the hard work his grandfather went through to create the perfect Rasengan, Boruto goes through several days of training, unaware that Sarada is watching him the whole time. Finally, Boruto is able to perform the Rasengan and shows it to Sasuke, who notes that it's much smaller compared to his many predecessors. Boruto interprets this as Sasuke being disappointed, and in frustration, throws the tiny Rasengan at a tree, and it disappears halfway from impact, which Sasuke watches with interest before he runs off. Sarada, who had been watching from afar, approaches her father and tries to encourage him to accept Boruto. As Sarada speaks on Boruto's behalf, Sasuke says he never said Boruto failed and was going to accept Boruto as a student, which made Sarada very happy. Sasuke looks back at the tree and silently notes a divot that was caused by Boruto's Rasengan. Boruto goes to Katasuke who comforts him, as Boruto explains that the training didn't produce any results. Katasuke gives him a kote, which he says can create a Rasengan, and Boruto accepts it without hesitation but doesn't tell Naruto or Sasuke, knowing they will disapprove. The next day, Boruto creates a standard sized Rasengan and shows it to Sasuke who notices the kote in Boruto's arm. Knowing Boruto is using an instrument, Sasuke voiced his suspicions about Boruto being able to make a larger Rasengan in one day. Boruto replies his talent is nothing like Naruto's, and Sasuke says he was hoping that wasn't the case before he starts to walk away. This angered Boruto, and he reminded Sasuke of their deal of becoming a student if he would learn the Rasengan, and Sasuke agreed to take him on as a student. As part of their training, Sasuke starts teaching Shuriken Jutsu to Boruto. While taking a break and sitting by a bonfire one night, Boruto asks Sasuke to tell him about Naruto. Sasuke described Naruto as a stubborn loser who went around ranting to be Hokage, but Boruto says he wants to know about Naruto's weaknesses. Sasuke tells him that Naruto was full of weaknesses and a good for nothing, but he overcame them in order to become the Hokage he is now. And Boruto needs to know who Naruto was back then rather than who he is now. On the first day of the Trinity exams, as Sarada prepares to meet with her team, she comments to her mother Sakura that she is in higher spirit since her father came home after so long. Sakura blushes and is embarrassed, and Sarada says she can see these things from her mother before taking off. Sakura then insists that Sarada is the happiest. Sarada meets Boruto, who tells her that he plans to learn about Naruto's weaknesses through his training with Sasuke so he can defeat his father. Sarada scolds him as they need to become Chunin before they can face against Naruto, and they're joined by Mitsuki as they show up their application for the exams. In Kumagakure, Momoshiki and Kinshiki extract Chaka from Gyuki and attack him with his own tailed beast ball before throwing Killer B into a ravine and leaving him to die. Deciding that this was not enough Chakra to satisfy their needs, Momoshiki and Kinshiki begin making their journey towards Konohakakure. After the two foes left, Killer B managed to swim to the surface with the aid of Gyuki. The first test, the Genin teams are required to answer a true or false question on the fifth volume of a novel series about ninja strategies. Knowing Sarada read the series, Boruto asks her if she knows the answer, but she says she was unaware of a fifth volume. Sarada asks Boruto what his father would likely pick, and which Boruto picks false. And when Boruto picks false, Sakura picks true because she wants to take a different path than her father. As they proceed with the test, they are first led to believe they answered incorrectly, when they find themselves falling down a pit with a lake of ink at the bottom. Sarada uses a wire attached to her kuna to keep her and Boruto from falling into the ink while Mitsuki grabs Sarada's hand. Boruto notices a second leg of ink in the false section, leading everyone to deduce that anyone who falls into the ink is disqualified, regardless of them getting the question right. They pass the first round. Upon hearing this, Naruto reacted calmly, but Shikamaru pressed him to reach out to Boruto. Boruto is unsure whether to use his kote because it's deemed a form of cheating and doesn't want to disappoint everyone, but when he receives a congratulations from Naruto via email after winning the first round, Boruto gets agitated that Naruto didn't at least send a shadow clone. Back to his training with Sasuke, Boruto struggles with Shurikajutsu and complains to Sasuke that it is Sarada's specialty due to her being Sasuke's daughter and an Uchiha. Sasuke creates multiple shadow clones and explains that it is Naruto's specialty, but hard work makes it possible for others to learn it. In the second round, Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki and the other competitors are to fight each other and compete for flags. Boruto and his team split up, but Boruto staying behind to protect their flag with Sarada and Mitsuki going to seal the other team's flags. Boruto faces another Genin team who nearly overpowers him with the multiple shadow clone technique and is seemingly about to get his flag. In desperation to win his father's recognition, Boruto uses his kote to use water release and then lightning release defeating his opponents. He radios for Sarada to finish it, and Sarada uses a Sharingan to see through again Jutsu the team placed on their flag and was able to retrieve it, winning the second round. Sarada scolds Boruto about him not being happy, but she gets in front of his face and comments his eyes are bluer than Naruto's, causing him to blush and get embarrassed when Mitsuki comes between them. Naruto, who had been nervous about the outcome of the second round, was overjoyed upon learning from Shikamaru that Boruto passed. Sasuke visits Naruto and asks if the scroll is deciphered, and Naruto says it won't be long. Naruto then says he heard from Konohamaru that Sasuke is training Boruto, and Naruto hints his sadness at not being able to train his own son, but he says Sasuke was right about the nature of Shinobi never changing. Sasuke agrees and leaves. Later that day, after returning home, Boruto is surprised to see his father come into his room, but is then happy and touched when his father personally congratulates him and voices his pride in him. Naruto initiates a fist bump, but Boruto simply smiles to avoid his father seeing his kote. And after Naruto leaves, Boruto gets overly excited that his father is proud of him. In the third round, Boruto fights Zoroi but defeats him with a shuriken with the aid of his kote. Sarada easily defeats her opponent and gets embarrassed when her mother proudly cheers for her from the audience. Naruto sits with his wife and daughter rather than with the other Kage when his son is matched with Shigadai. Boruto seemingly wins after Shigadai surrenders due to being trapped by Boruto's multiple shadow clone technique, but Naruto senses something is wrong and after asking Hinata to use her Byakugan, he deduces that Boruto used a kote to cheat. Meanwhile, the scroll is deciphered and Sasuke quickly goes to warn Naruto. Disappointed that his son has been cheating, Naruto confronts Boruto. 
deems Shikidai the winner, and disqualifies Boruto by taking away his forehead protector and tells Boruto that he will lecture him when they get home. Enraged, Boruto lashes out at Naruto for when does he have time to lecture him, and Boruto blames Naruto for everything that's happened. Soon after, the two shinobi that Sasuke fought appear and proceed to attack the arena, which creates chaos. Naruto tries to get Boruto to safety, but is knocked out of the arena by Momoshiki. Sasuke saves Sarada from falling debris and is attacked by Kinshiki. Boruto tries to attack Momoshiki with his kote, but all of his attacks end up getting absorbed through Momoshiki's Rinnegan, leaving him scared and defenseless. Naruto grabs his son as Shikamaru tries to restrain the two enemies, but fails as Momoshiki absorbs his power. Naruto and Sasuke team up to protect their children, and Sasuke informs Naruto that they can't use their jutsu on the two, and Naruto realizes he's their target. After introducing themselves as Momoshiki and Kinshiki Yosotsuki, Momoshiki and Kinshiki explain that they intend to retrieve Kaguya's scattered chakra and cultivate it into a new Cinnabar Panacea, which will grant them eternal youth and supernatural phenomena. Sasuke deduces the scroll foretold the arrival of the two, and Kaguya was forming a new white Zetsu army to fight against them, revealing that they are the threat greater than Kaguya that Sasuke had been searching for. Momoshiki and Kinshiki also intend to capture Naruto with the intent of extracting Kurama and using his chakra from their own use. Momoshiki creates a tailed beast ball that is amplified by the jutsu we collected and is about to attack everyone with it. Sarada is fearful of Momoshiki's monstrous strength and falls to her knees, prompting Boruto to create a shadow cloud to protect her. Naruto and Sasuke combine Susanoo and Kurama in order to shield themselves from the attack, but Naruto asks Sasuke to take care of Boruto and Sarada. Sasuke guards the children when Naruto tries to stop the attack. Although Naruto stops the attack, he is ultimately captured. Before he disappears, Naruto gives his son a warm smile and Boruto shouts out to his father before he falls unconscious. When Boruto wakes up in the hospital, he finds his mother being healed by Sakura after she tried to save his father. Feeling guilty for how badly he treated his father, Boruto goes into Naruto's office, finds his father's old jacket, and puts it on. Boruto calls himself uncool, and Sasuke comes in agreeing. Sasuke tells him that everyone at the exam scorned him and he got his head been taken away from him, and he is no longer a ninja. He also comments that if it had not been for his sister who adores him and his mother who worries about him, Boruto would be in the same situation as Naruto was in the past. Boruto asks how his father was able to do what he did, and Sasuke tells him that he can ask Naruto later because he can sense Naruto's chakra, meaning Naruto is still alive, and Sasuke intends to rescue him. Boruto asks Sasuke why he would bother with someone like him, and Sasuke replies that Boruto is a strong shinobi with the potential to surpass Naruto, and further elaborates that Boruto is not only his best disciple, but a bigger loser than Naruto because Boruto hates to lose. Sensing that Naruto is in another dimension, Sasuke activates his Rinnegan to teleport himself to Naruto's location and rescue him. The four Kage ally with Sasuke in the mission to rescue Naruto, and Sasuke lets Boruto go with them. Hinata refused to let Boruto go out of fear for his safety, but when Boruto put on Sasuke's scratched forehead protector, she remembered how Naruto was like when he was younger, and she decides to trust him and asks him to take care of his father. Naruto is bound by the Otsutsuki pair who tried to extract Kurama's chakra from him, but Momoshiki complains it's taking too long. Naruto replies that ninjas don't like taking things easy, and they look up to see the other Kage charging at them. The four Kage engage in battle against Kinshiki and Momoshiki while Sasuke and Boruto rescue Naruto, who asks about Boruto and why he's wearing the jacket. And Sasuke says many things happened, but Boruto has become a shinobi. Naruto apologized to Boruto for not being there for him, but Boruto says it was alright and he just wanted to hear stories about him. Knowing their ninjutsu will be absorbed by Momoshiki, everyone decides to fight him with Taijutsu. Kurotsuchi and Chojuro initially captured Kinshiki with Sasuke's help, and then he fought Momoshiki with Gara and Darui. Seeing Sasuke fight Momoshiki, Kinshiki broke free and unleashed a destructive blast around him to throw everyone off, although it left him injured. To everyone's horror, Momoshiki turns Kinshiki into a chakra fruit and swallows him, which increases his strength and makes him undergo a drastic physical change. Sasuke and Naruto team up to fight against him and manage to overpower Momoshiki for a short time with Taijutsu before Naruto is briefly imprisoned by boulders and Sasuke is severely burned by Momoshiki's lava chakra. Naruto comes to Sasuke's aid with his tailed beast mode and becomes enraged at seeing his friend so badly hurt but is relieved to find that he's okay and can still fight after being healed by Kurama's chakra. They manage to gain the upper hand when Naruto combines Kurama with Sasuke's Susanoo which increases Kurama's chakra and they cut Momoshiki's magma creature in half. However, after Momoshiki is defeated, Katasuke uses his device on Momoshiki in an attempt to finish him off but Momoshiki absorbs all of his attacks and restores his strength. Momoshiki captures the other Kage in a shadow jutsu and binds Naruto in an attempt to extract Kurama once again, and intends to kill the other Kage. Sasuke protects Boruto from Momoshiki's attacks and tells Boruto to use the Vanishing Rasengan. Boruto doubts that it will actually work, but Sasuke encourages him to trust his master. Boruto launches the Rasengan at Momoshiki, who is knocked down from the impact and frees Naruto and the Kage. In an effort to finish Momoshiki off once and for all, Naruto lends his chakra to Boruto while Sasuke distracts Momoshiki long enough for Boruto to create a giant Rasengan. Boruto uses a Shadow Clone to ambush Momoshiki and take out his Rinnegan before Boruto launches his attack on Momoshiki and destroys him, with his right arm severely burned as a result. After the battle, Naruto and Sasuke sit by each other and Sasuke declares he won their bet, to which Naruto agrees. From the experience, Boruto and Naruto reconcile their differences. After the battle, Boruto posts for a photograph of Naruto, Sasuke, and the other four Kage. One morning, Hinata is knitting Boruto's jacket, but Boruto tells her it looks fine the way it is and reminds Naruto they need to leave. After leaving home, Boruto and Naruto fist bumped and then asked the other to do their best as they left for a mission and for work, respectively. For his role in defeating Momoshiki, Boruto has become a hero and received lots of attention, although Sarada remained angry at him for cheating despite Boruto's many apologies to her. Boruto, Sarada, Mitsuki, and Konohamaru are sent on a mission to capture a bear that is running loose in the village. When asked by Sarada if he wanted to become Hokage, Boruto tells her that he doesn't want to be Hokage, and he will protect her if she becomes a Hokage, causing her to blush deeply. Boruto further says he wants to be a shinobi like Sasuke, and he will follow his own ninja way as Sarada stares at him in amazement and blushing at him. Noticing from afar, Sasuke and Sakura both smiling watch the children. Konohamaru is chased by a wild bear, and Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki jump from the Hokage monument and into the air as Boruto prepares to launch a Rasengan. After
Shocked, Sarada asks if Orochimaru is his mother or father, to which Miski says it doesn't matter, and Boruto angrily demands to know who Orochimaru is, who is watching them from a building above. And that is that! What is our time? What do we clock in at? Holy smokes. Hopefully I did that as quickly as possible. I don't know if it's a world record, but uh, you know, maybe it is. See if you can beat it. I dare ya. Did you enjoy your video? Make sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.